How about a nice round of applause for Mason Ellis? Number 40, Desmond Fletcher, safety from Fayetteville, Georgia, who is majoring in business management. Desmond is with his mother, Mrs. Desmonia Fletcher, and his father, Mr. Donald Fletcher. Let's hear it for Desmond Fletcher. Number 43, Alan Rios, kicker from Tanner, Alabama, who is majoring in accounting. Alan is with his mother, Mrs. Virginia Rios, and his father, Mr. Jose Rios. Number 46, Justin St. John, safety from Lancaster, California, who is majoring in liberal studies. Justin is with his AAMU cornerbacks coach, Kenyatta McCoy. Let's hear it for Justin St. John. Number 50, Jordan Wilson, linebacker from Huntsville, Alabama, who is majoring in sports management with a minor in marketing. Jordan is with his mother, Mrs. Gwendolyn Hargrove Wilson and his father, Mr. James Wilson. A big hand for Jordan Wilson. Number 71, Tavoris Butler, offensive lineman from Dothan, Alabama, who is majoring in sports management. Tavoris is with his mother, Ms. Chandra Dixon and Aunt Ms. Jamitra Colbert, a big hand for Tavoris Butler. Number 74, Philip Haynes, offensive lineman from Memphis, Tennessee, who is majoring in kinesiology. Philip is with his brother, Everett Curry, and his other brother, Corey Brown. Let's hear it for Philip Haynes. Number 75, Shawnee Reams, offensive lineman from Dothan, Alabama, who is majoring in sports management. Shawnee is with his mother, Mrs. April Phillips. Number 79, Robert Samuel, offensive lineman from Tuscaloosa, Alabama who is majoring in sports management. Robert is with his mother, Mrs. Zandra Samuel. Number 93, Elijah Jordan, defensive lineman from Mobile, Alabama, majoring in food science. Elijah is with his mother, Mrs. Yvonne Jordan, and his father, Mr. Kendrick Jordan. Let's hear it for Elijah Jordan. Number 27, Kennedy OBR, running back from Hazel Green, Alabama, majoring in biology. OBR is with his mother, Mrs. Regina OBR, and his father, Mr. George OBR. Let's hear it for this senior, Kenneth OBR. Number 76, Joshua Williams, offensive lineman from Mobile, Alabama, majoring in liberal arts. Joshua is with his aunt, Mrs. Sylvette Monroe, and AAMU offensive line coach, Marcus Lawrence. Now for our senior cheerleaders. Devin Dene Jones, a biology major from Russellville, Alabama. Devin is escorted by Bruiser, the Alabama A&M University mascot. Let's hear it for Devin Dene Jones. Taylor Matthews from Atlanta, Georgia, majoring in sports management. 
Taylor is escorted by AAMU cheer captain Jennifer Gray. Let's hear it for this student athlete, Taylor Matthews. Antonio Roach, a business administration major from Atlanta, Georgia. Antonio is escorted by AAMU cheer captain Hannah Brown. Shaylen Williams, an animal biology, biohealth science major from Palmdale, California. Shaylen is escorted by AAMU cheer co-captain Azerica Watkins. Once again, let's give a proud standing ovation, round of applause for our senior student athletes. Our student athletes were greeted by Alabama A&M Athletic Director, Mr. Brian Hicks, and Coach Connell Maynard. Ariel took down enough pins to help win a conference championship. Her mechanics are just as strong in engineering. Aiden is mastering psychology on the golf course and in the classroom. No hurdles too high for Raven. On the track or in nutrition. Alabama a &M, Four years of artistic, academic, and athletic discovery. We deliver the full university experience. Alabama a &M University. Start here. Go anywhere. Ladies and gentlemen, we'd ask you to please stand for our invocation. Our invocation today is given by Pastor Troy Garner from the Fellowship of Faith Church. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let us pray. It may be raining, but Father, you reign. You are the Lord over the weather and light. On today, we ask your blessings to be upon the seniors. Thank you for their contributions on the field, and we ask that you bless them in their prospective careers and future endeavors. As Psalms 1-3 declares, may they be successful and fruitful. We thank you for the alumni, fans, and sponsors for their stewardship of time and treasure to Alabama A&M. Continue to bless our athletic department, the AD, the coaches, and President Houdini. In your name we pray. Let everyone say amen. Would you remain standing as the Alabama A&M University Bulldog Battalion brings the colors to midfield. And now, our national anthem, 
played by the Alabama A&M University March in Maroon and White under the direction of Mr. Carlton Wright. Ladies and gentlemen, here are your probable starting lineups for today's game. For the visiting Mississippi Valley State University Delta Devils, on offense, at left tackle number 78, James Lofton, at left guard number 73, Zacchaeus Sias, at center number 55, Shed Kedrick Ross, at right guard, number 69, Quajon Spradley. At right tackle, number 70, Nari Masolino. At wide receiver, number five, Sedavin Gray. At wide receiver, number 17, Johnny Wilson. At wide receiver, number eight, Jarius Clayton. At wide receiver, number 86, Malik Myers. At quarterback, number 16, Dejeric Bryant. At running back, number 23, Jean Derek Smith. On defense for the visiting Delta Devils. At defensive end, number 92, Jerry Garner. Defensive tackle, number 90, Romulus Carey. At nose guard, number 93, Antoine Howard. Defensive end, number 40, Ray Taylor. The Mike linebacker, number 33, Roderick's Dozier. The Will linebacker, number 58, Tadarius Davis. The star linebacker, number one, Tracy Tompkins. At cornerback, number two, Jamenta Shaw. Free safety, number four, Jonathan Jones. Strong safety, number six, Keontae Daniels. And cornerback, Number 11, William Morgan. And now starting for your Alabama A&M University Hello, football Bulldogs. fans, and a welcome to Huntsville, Alabama, inside of Lewis Cruz Stadium. On this is the site for today's SWAC tackle. finale for number the Alabama A&M Bulldogs as they take Reams. on the Mississippi guard, Valley Delta Devils. Good evening, Joshua everyone. Williams. I'm Mo Carter alongside Reginald Reese. We're your broadcast crew today for the season finale between the Bulldogs and, and Delta guard, Devils. Of course, Reggie, we've seen a lot of things happen this season. But at the end of the day, this is the end of the season, and it's always good to get a W going into the offseason, right? Yeah, that's right. Both teams come in here on a one-game losing streak. A&M losing a heartbreaker to all four at the end of the game. 
Badly the Steve Ibrahim, is going to go out to the Bramley receiver, last time out as well. 14, so both teams Ryan are kind of being able to close out the season with some good momentum for the offense. The now, of course, today is senior day, so a lot of guys who have put a lot of blood, sweat, and tears here on the hill, they're playing for the final time, not only in front of their home crowd, but also for their final collegiate career. And, of course, a lot of eyes are on the guy that wears number one, who has a lot of fun, and that is Mr. Jordan Bentley. And Jordan Bentley arguably might be the best player we have seen next no to John Stallworth and Robert Mathis 97, here on the campus of Alabama a and University. Bentley has over 1,300 yards so far this season and over 3,000 yards for a career. So what a better way to go out than have a W at home to close out your college career. Absolutely. As you mentioned, Jordan Bentley, like he has been like all around one of the best Bulldog players we've had in recent history. He basically has almost every single rushing record is except the longest rushing touchdown. But also you think about it, this guy has only been healthy roughly two and a half years. So it's just crazy to think what would have happened if he would have been healthy for four complete years. I mean, it, it's the biggest what if you might find for this program in the modern day. I mean, the way that he's been able to maintain success going from Coach Spady to Coach Maynard and then increase on that success for the last two seasons has really shown just the amount of just the amount of um, legacy that he's created for himself while not being able to stay healthy for four years. Now, if you're curious how good Jordan Bentley was, just consider this. Last week, he had over 240 rushing yards against an all-court state defense. That's basically one of the best in the conference overall. And, I mean, he basically had the Bulldogs on his back last week. Unfortunately, that critical mistake at the end basically made the difference as far as Alabama and them playing for an East Division title today compared to just playing for their season finale today. Yeah, and it's sad because Bentley had 245 yards rushing. He had four touchdowns in that game. He was a man amongst boys, and he was named the SWAT Co-Offensive Player of the Week. But it's not the way you want to win the award, losing the de facto SWAC Eastern Championship. Absolutely. All right, everyone. Well, we've got about a minute until kickoff here inside of Lewis Cruz Stadium. They just had the coin toss. Alabama A&M will receive to kick things off here. It looks like Coach Maynard and company will actually get on the offensive side of the ball. That means we'll get a chance to see the SWAC's leading passer, Akil Glass, go to work with Jordan Bentley behind him. So quickly, Reggie, what are some things that Alabama A&M is going to have to do offensively to be successful against this Mississippi Valley State's defense that actually is pretty good when you look at the stats. When you look at the stats, Valley State comes in here 29 sacks on the season. That's the best in the conference, but we have Akil Glass over 3,000 yards passing. He is the school's all-time season leader for passing yards in a single season. Again, Jordan Bentley, this offense as a whole, over 5,000 yards. So you want to score early. You want to score often. You want to run effectively. But Akil Glass, stay cool, stay calm, stay collected. He has nine interceptions on the season, so that's about one interception per game. So just relax, play your style, and just ease into it as the game goes on. Also, and quickly, tell me about this Mississippi Valley defense. You and I were talking about it. They've got two of the leading sack uh, masters within the conference. Jerry Garner, Eric Powell, eight and a half stacks and six stats, um, six sacks respectively for both um, the linebacker and the defensive lineman. 29 sacks as a team. But also this defense, they can hit the quarterback very effectively as well. You're talking about um, 14 quarterback hits as well to go along with this defense um, for one of their linebackers. But one factor that will stand out above all else besides the sacks, the penalties, because they don't give up that many penalty yards per game. All right, here's the kickoff. It is Hayden Schuster kicking it off. And a back beat for Alabama A&M was Gary Qualls. However, number 27, Kenneth over your one of the backup running backs takes it in. He gets a few yards and he's tackled somewhere around the 25 yard line. That's where Alabama AM will start off first and 10 on their first drive of this game. Now, of course, this is not the only swag matchup going on today. Over in Mississippi, you got the battle of. I don't exactly know what they call it now. They used to call it the Soul Bowl, but of course, it is Al it is, it's Jackson State against Alcorn State. And then later on, you got. Texas Southern taking on Arkansas Pine Bluff. But this one, it's going on right now on the first play. It is that guy, Jordan Bentley, is 30 to 35 to 40 to 45. He's knocked out near midfield. Jordan Bentley picking up where he left off last week against Alcorn State. And that's very, very unusual from this Valley State defense. They're really good at getting tackles for loss, but on that play right now, just now, they couldn't do it and couldn't shut down Jordan Bentley. That's a Bulldogs first down. They've got it first down in 10. 
Two wide receivers to the top, two wide receivers to the bottom. Akil Glass hands it off once again to Jordan Bentley, and he is met in that interior line by Mississippi Valley's Desmond, excuse me, that's for Alabama a &M. Number 40 is Ray Taylor, a defensive lineman for the Delta Devils. Doesn't look like he picked up any yardage on that one. Ray Taylor, so far two and a half sacks on the season, but six quarterback hits, so look for him to be a pretty big disruptor to Akil Glass. All right, same formation once again. So here we go. Kill Glass steps back to pass and throws it to his tight end, and that is Howard. He'll pick up about six yards on the play. Howard's one of those guys, like, he's a he's a big body. He can get your hands on it. And he, once he gets the hands on the football, it's hard to bring him down. Well, it's really hard for any defense to find that good matchup to take on big, strong tight ends. And that's why he's been so effective so far this season. All right, so here it is. Third down and short. Alabama A&M coming out. Kill Glass still in the shotgun. He's got Jordan Bentley right behind him in a pistol formation. They'll hand it off to Bentley, and he is met in the backfield. The Delta Devils were ready for that one, and that is number 58, Tadarius Davis, coming through for the big stop for the Delta Devils. And that's a 75th tackle on the season. I mean, he's been one of the best on this team at getting tackles, as you can see right there from the stats. And Valley State, it's really surprising. Again, the record, don't let it fool you. They have a really, really stout defense, and that's because of their head coach. Um, that's because of their head coach, Vincent. Um, Vincent. in punt formation for the Bulldogs, number 19, Spencer Corey. Don't worry, we'll get to you in just a second. Vincent Dancy. Yeah. I actually tell you about Coach Dancy later on. So here we go. Alabama AM punting, and the ball goes out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. So Mississippi Valley will get it at the 20 yard line. So yeah, Vincent Dancy is actually their head coach. Heck of a football player when he was at Jackson State. I actually played against him during my days when I was playing at Southern University. Like when you're talking about a guy who was very, very smart, he was a student of the game, and God, he will put a hit on you. So nowadays, he's now on the other side of things, trying to teach these guys how to play the game well, how to play the game safe, and also how to play the game smart. And I think, honestly, of course, this is the second year. You know, they've got two wins on the season. They're going to have way more if, if the pendulum swings a different way or whatever. I think he has Valley going in the right direction. It's just a matter of what the time frame will be for the Delta Devils. Speaking of the Delta Devils, they will start things off first down and 10. The handoff goes to number 27. Uh, that is Caleb Johnson, and he maybe picks up a yard on number that play there. Number 16, the Jarek the Bryant is the quarterback starting today for Mississippi Valley. Tell me about Bryant. Well, you know, to Jarek Bryant, he is one of the few quarterbacks in the conference that leads his team in both passing yards and rushing yards, over 1,000 yards passing and 637 yards rushing. So look for him to be the anchor of this offense once again today. All right, Bryant tries to throw the quick swing pass over again to Johnson, and it falls incomplete. Honestly, if he makes that catch, he's picking up at least seven or eight yards primarily because they were in a trip set to the near side, and all those guys were blocking Alabama and them defenders. Well, let's see what Coach Maynard will dial up on defense. And let's see what this AM defensive line will do right here because this AM defensive line, about 280 um, throughout the entire defensive unit. So let's see if they can get some pressure on Bryant. And if I'm not mistaken, Mississippi Valley doesn't have a guy that's under 295 on their offensive line. No, they don't. They're all 295 to 330 pounds. One of their offensive linemen is 6'6, 310. So Brian that Brad offensive line is really, really beefy, really, really beefed up. There's some big boys down there. Right. The swing pass goes to Jarius Clayton. He picks up about three yards on the play, but the front seven of Alabama a and defended that very well. Brings up a punting situation coming up for Mississippi Valley. a and doing a really good job of shutting down the play. But we'll see what happens here for a and on offense now. Justin Reed coming on the punt for the Delta Devils back deep for Alabama A&M is Odile Hilaire. We've seen him have some flashes of brilliance this year. No big, big plays, but he had a lot of what-ifs. So here we go, Hilaire backpelling. He takes it in around the 35, and he is met by a host of Mississippi Valley defenders led by a number 28 on the play for the tackle, and that is Breland Frank. So this will be the second possession for Alabama A&M. Hopefully they can get something going like they had on the first play of the game because it really seemed like after that first and second play, nothing else worked well. Well, you know, again, it's kind of trying to settle lane. You want to score early and often. And Coach Maynard knows how, knows how good this Valley State defense is, but he said himself, we're not sure what Valley State team is going to show up, so you got to be able to execute early to avoid the Valley State team that came out and won 
35 to 14 a few weeks ago. Akil Glass running the option. He pitches it out to Jordan Bentley. Bentley's got five, six yards on the play, and it'll be second and manageable coming up for the Bulldogs. I tell you, when I see Akil Glass running the option, I kind of cringe for a second because I know he's not the fastest guy in the world. However, somehow these plays somehow work. We've seen touchdowns come from them as well. I mean, one of those touchdowns on the option came in the Magic City Classic when they beat the Hornets 43-41 to 41 as well. Absolutely. Akil Glass hands it off this time to Jordan Bentley. Look at him dragging defenders. He'll take three guys with him, and he'll pick up a first down near the midfield mark. So Jordan Bentley, of course, continuing to show his strength and his power in his last day as an Alabama A&M football player inside Lewis Cruz Stadium. We saw he was decked out with, fan, with the fan base or whatever, you know, mom, dad, fiance, and then had a whole lot of people in the stands cheering from him because he's right down the road from Gunnersville. So here we go. First down and 10 trips to the near side. Akil Glass stepping back to pass. He's pressured a little bit, steps up. He still gets away, and then he's able to throw it, and he's got his tight end once again. And that is Howard, excuse me, that's Kendrick Johnson coming up with the big catch. And he'll pick up about seven yards on that play. Gives another second down and manageable for Alabama A&M. Akil Glass, really good pass right there. 29 touchdowns on the season so far. So. Despite the one interception per Standing game, he still can get you about two or three touchdowns a game as well. Exactly. Akil Glass has by four now become Alabama A&M's most prolific passer, and he's still got another year to play here on the hill, which I know Coach Manor is loving for sure. So here's Glass once again That's running so the awesome. option, and he is tripped mm. up by one of Mississippi Valley's um, linebackers there. And I'm looking at this young man, and his number is not on the roster, so we'll have to double-check on who they actually give that to stats-wise. But that'll bring up third down coming up. So third and about five here. So let's see what Coach Manor and company draw up. They've been moving the ball well, but when he gets to third down, it becomes a different ball game. Gil Glass calling the cadences. He's got two receivers to the top. He's got a tight end in the slot and a single receiver at the bottom, along with Jordan Bentley in the backfield. So here's Glass. Mississippi Valley brings pressure. Glass will throw it down the field. And he's got a man. That's number 85, Adu Fatih Ibrahim. And he's in the end zone for a touchdown for the Bulldogs. What a one-on-one -on -one route. Akil Glass stood in the pocket, had the presence, and stood with confidence to deliver a very, very accurate ball. Adu Fatih Ibrahim, you call this guy's name, and when we do, he usually has big plays behind it. Talk about big plays, man. A couple of weeks ago when we were here against Jackson State, we could not call this guy's name enough as he basically was one of the playmakers that made things happen against Jackson State in that victory and that thrilling victory, as a matter of fact. Well, with that touchdown pass, he's inching that much closer to 1,000 yards, and that's now 11 touchdowns for Ibrahim. All right, so here's the extra point. It goes up by Spencer Court, and it is good. So with 9.06 to play here in Huntsville, Alabama, your score, the Alabama A&M Bulldogs, seven, the Mississippi Valley Delta Devils, zero. So we got 9.06 left in the first quarter. Reggie, what did you like about that um, for that second drive for Alabama A&M? I mean, simply, simply put, easy. You, Frederick, you executed very well, did what you had to do. The kill glass, played with confidence. I think the option play kind of gave him a sense of, okay, let's get into it, let's ease into it. I got Jordan Bentley going, now I can get the play action pass working a little bit. Found Ibrahim one-on-one, -on -one. easy touchdown. Now, of course, Alabama a and when you look at their passing stats, of course, the passing kind of outweighs the rushing attack. But then when you look at a drive like that, they did a good job mixing and matching the passing attack and the rushing attack. I mean, Jordan Bentley gets some good runs. They run the option, and all of a sudden, here comes Glass hitting for Ty Ibrahim uh, over the top for a touchdown. So I think right there, that kind of shows you that Alabama a wants to keep Mississippi Valley on their toes. Well, do you think come next season – with the departure of Jordan Bentley, are we going to go to just an air it out attack, you know, just air A&M next season? I think they're probably going to try to still remain balanced per se. And the reason why I say that is because you still do have a young running back core coming behind Jordan Bentley. Now, nobody is the next Jordan Bentley. Coach Maynard will tell you that from top to bottom. But at the same time, if you can kind of get the essence of what everything can be, then all of a sudden you still got some good things going. And, of course, um, you know, I can't really get too much into this because it's kind of like coach speak. But, of course, they're still looking at a recruiting <laughs> aspect of certain things. And who knows, you know, maybe in recruiting things they 
you pick up transfers possibly. Yep. You may look for somebody that may have a similar skill set. But there are at least two running backs on the team that have a skill set, and they're actually the same size as Jordan Bentley. So maybe once they get it, that could kind of be – enterprising as well. But the best thing about Akil Glass coming back next year is that he's got a plethora of playmakers on both, I mean, in both the running back aspect and the wide receivers and the tight end. So I think next year when he comes back, he'll still be able to, you know, swing the ball out, but then try to build up a rushing attack as well. So here we go, Mississippi Valley now on uh, their second drive. Here comes a speed sweep to number eight, and that is uh, Jarius Clayton. He takes it around the left side, picks up maybe about two yards on the play, three Bulldogs in on the tackle for Alabama a and Well, you know, when you look at the head coach, Vincent Dancy, I mean, 17th head coach in Valley State history, trying to build up a really, really good program. What I find interesting Second about him, though, is he's a big, in-the-trenches type of guy. His offensive line and his defensive line, two of some of the biggest in the conference, so you can kind of see where he wants to build this football program is through offensive line and defensive line play in the trenches. Caleb Johnson takes the quick pitch around the right side. He had some running room, but then the slick feel and the turf monster actually gets him on the play. So we're going to go credit, you know, Mother Nature and the turf monster <laughs> on, on that play as he picks up about only one yard on the play. Comes up to now third down and about seven. Alabama a and defense trying to get off the field once again against this Delta Devils offense. a and playing a 4-2-5, bringing four this time. All right, so quarterback steps up and he is pressured however he will pick up a first down on that one that's the Jarek Bryant once again calling his own number he just didn't see anything down the field so he just put it in his own hands and in that case it picks up positive yards and a first down so they're moving those chains for the Delta Devils. But with the linebackers playing off a little bit that's the reason why Bryant was able to get in the middle and get the easy first so only bringing four you kind of open up the running lanes for his for his legs. So Brian has two wide receivers to the top. He's got a tight end in the slot and then runs the man in motion. He'll hand it off to Johnson. Johnson doesn't have any room up the middle. He tries to bounce it outside. He'll pick up about two yards on the play before he's tackled by a host of Bulldogs. Brings up second down on this play. Kind of looks like Mississippi Valley is trying to just be slow and steady with their offense instead of being more of an up-tempo style. Well, they only average about 16 Johnson points per game on offense. So you're really Valley. relying on your defense a lot. So it's kind of telling your offense, hey, just – don't mess up, in Lay a sense, but still Carter. get downfield, get some time off the clock, and do Second whatever you can down. to Seven keep this low scoring. All right, here Valley. comes a reverse, everyone. It looks like they're trying to throw the Valley special, and is it a – yes, it is a catch right mm. there <laughs> by the quarterback. That's Bryant, the, and they, here's what happened if you just two. didn't see it. So Number Clayton basically two. gets it on the wide receiver reverse, and he Lee throws Jerry it down the Bryant. field to Brian, and I guess you would call that the Delta Devil special? I guess. I mean, everybody's creating their own version of it. Of course, this was made famous by the New England Patriots, and then later on, the Philadelphia Eagles when they played the Patriots in the Super Bowl. But hey, play does result in the first down, and Brian now running a little up-tempo offense, trying to catch everyone off guard, and that's Jarius Clayton, who was the intended wide receiver, but he could not make the catch on that play. Second down coming up for the Delta Devils, but this is the first time they're in Alabama A&M territory and they beat the he beat the one-on-one -on -one coverage but Bryant just threw the ball a little bit too low and he kind of slid for the for the pass coming his way now of course look um, I'm looking out, out at the weather it's very very cloudy it is misting a little drizzle coming down so yeah that means everything's going to be a little slick there so here we go Bryant all kinds of fakes and eventually he will dump it off to Johnson Johnson breaks about three tackles bounces off another guy and he'll pick up about seven yards on the play there so Brian that's one of those situations if you're a defensive coach you're just pulling your hair out even though coach Eastman doesn't have any hair so he's probably pulling something else but he hates on the fact that you want to get the big hit but you're not wrapping up you gotta finish those tackles you have them in the back but you gotta finish those tackles and make it finish those plays you can't sit here and look too pretty doing it just make them happen it would have been a tackle for a loss instead it is a six yard gain and now Mississippi Valley has third and about four so here's Bryant. Actually, he's going to try to go up top, uh, going he deep. He's got a man, and it's just out of the reach of Clayton on that Bryant one. He had Clayton. is just ball. literally a yard too far Bryant ahead of him. Well, you know, Bryant, he put Fourth up a pretty, look, he put up a pretty good looking ball, and the receiver beat the safety. 
but you got to bring the pass down a little bit more or the receiver has to try to get that extra gear to get the um, touchdown. And on that play there, you just knew Bryant was just going to look for Clayton on that one. Like there, there was no other person running that route besides Clayton, and he almost had it. However, almost doesn't count except in horseshoes, but we're playing football right here. So fourth down for Mississippi Valley. Mm. Bryant tries to check off, throws a dump, and it goes off the – Hands of his intended wide receiver. That's number 86, Malik Myers, and Alabama A&M's defense gets off the field thanks to an incomplete pass by Mississippi Valley. Great defensive stop. You know, A&M, they're really, they're really vulnerable on defense to giving up plays to anybody. And with Valley State coming in here, driving downfield, wearing out the defense, good job by A&M to hold strong and to hold firm. So back comes the Alabama A&M offense. Last time we saw them on the field, Kill Glass went up top to a duel for Ty Ibrahim for a 47-yard <laughs> touchdown. And that's where we have our current score up 7 to nothing. You know, Glass and company trying to get once again on that offensive scoreboard. So here we go. Glass with the fake, and he's going one on deep one. once again. And he's got a one-on-one mm -hmm. -on -one situation. And guess what he was looking for? Ibrahim. Ibrahim had the catch, but then the good Valley defender the knocked it out in the last second. But good rebound, by Kill Glass on that one because that Valley defender – was beat on that play by about a step. Great, great defense. And, I mean, he had the step. He had he high pointed the ball. But still, great defense came up on that play for Valley State to prevent another first down. So here we go, second down and 10. Akil Glass has two receivers to the top, two receivers to the bottom. Jordan Bentley in the pistol formation right behind him. They're going to bring five this time. All right, and here we go. Glass gets it out to Ibrahim. He shakes a tackle, shakes a second one, and guess what? He's got a first down, so let's move those chains for a Bulldogs first down. Well, a and I think they're going to try to incorporate Bentley a little bit more in the passing attack this time because what makes him so great is that if you run a lot with you, if you run a lot with him, play action pass. If you open up the pass with him, go back to the run, and he can't get you out the backfield. He has a few touchdowns from the passing game. It's crazy to think that he was a walk-on, and now he is a starter, one of the leading wide receivers when it comes to yardage per game in the entire SWAC. Speaking of leaders in the SWAC, Jordan Bentley takes the handoff right here. However, he does not pick up any yards. The Delta Devils defensive line was waiting for him on that one. I mean, it's really, really rare to see him, you know, come up short on a running play like that. But Jordan Bentley, when you talk about him, you can't say enough about him. Once again, arguably – one of the three best players in the history of this school with the way that Second he's played and performed in, in the four years that he's been here. Alabama and, you know, it's crazy. And Some and people will probably argue that or whatever, but when you look at what he's done in the amount of time he's been here, it the argument definitely has worth on it. Actually, on that play, Bentley lost a yard, so it'll be second down and 11. Kill Glass now has an empty backfield, three receivers to the bottom, two to the top. Glass, got to get it off quick because Valley's coming with pressure. Oh, no, he throws yeah. an interception. It's picked off by number 21 of Mississippi Valley. That is Andrew Blutsaw Jr. I mean, he just read the play perfectly. Like, a kill glass. He jumped the route. He he definitely yeah. did jump the route. It looks like the AM receiver was supposed to throw a quick Andrew slant, Blutsaw. and apparently, either he tried to break off of it or. Yeah, I'm looking back at the replay. Basically, yeah, he, he jumped the route and was able to pick it off right then and there. Great play by the defensive back for Mississippi Valley. So now they've got the ball first down to 10 on their own 45-yard line. And looking to make a momentum swing. So let's see what Bryant and company will do coming out on the offensive side of the ball. So Bryant. Fakes the pitch. Absolutely. Now he's trying to roll out, and he's got a man. And it fumble. fumble on the play, however, number five, that is – so Devin Gray recovers the ball on that one, but he took a huge hit from Holloway mm. on that one before <laughs> he's actually able to recover the ball. Like it, it was a nice legal hit yeah. that yeah, probably complete. like probably rung his bell for a second, and once he hit the ground, he realized, oh man, I don't have the ball, but somehow he got the ball back. It was on it was on that threshold. It was on that fine line of a legal hit and a good hit. All right, Johnson takes the handoff right here. He'll pick up about four yards to bring up about second down and six for Mississippi Valley. Valley now getting close to the red zone, so you got to think that Coach Granville Eastman will be trying to draw up some other special defensive fronts, defensive plays. Looks like Bam A and M is rolling with four defensive linemen, and uh, Johnson once again hand gets the handoff, and he'll break a tackle, and he'll pick up a first down. You saw A and M's defense kind of playing back. May have expected another, you know, pass from the Jared Bryant to catch them off guard, but they prepared for the wrong type of play, and Valley State was back at it with a run. By Caleb Johnson. Absolutely. So here we go. First down and First 10. Alabama A&M's defense trying to hold Mississippi Valley from out of 
the red zone first and foremost. A quick screen pass goes over to number five. That is to Devin Gray once again, the guy who just recovered his own fumble. He doesn't pick up much on that one as the defender for Alabama A&M read that perfectly. Again, a great start by A&M on defense. Let's see what Ballastic will come up with this time. They might do a – Maybe a quarterback Second option. Could, it could be. If um, if Brian does see something, you know, that's got to be something that you have to consider as well. And they guess what? It. They do. Brian bounces outside. He's at the 15, the 10, the 5. Stretches mm -hmm. for the pylon. I think he's knocked out prior to they going will. in. They look like they're going to mark him around the 3 a yard line. line. So, yeah, Reggie, you definitely did yard. call it on that one. Knocked out of bounds. I'm not a fortune teller. <laughs> so, I'm not a fortune teller. But with the way you can run the football, I mean, you got to use your quarterback's legs whenever you can. So here we go, Brian, once again calling his own number. And this Touchdown. time he finds pay dirt. Touchdown, Mississippi Valley. The Jarek Bryant calling his own number, and he's into the end zone. Interesting fact about Bryant, he's actually top ten in the conference in rushing yards, which is – it's crazy. It's mind-blowing. But they don't run that type of option offense either. Apparently, Long Coach Dancy must have saw something at some point in time during this um, season and probably told his offensive coordinator, like, hey, maybe we need to run our quarterback just a little bit more. And one thing we've noticed with Alabama A&M's defense, they have kind of struggled against rushing quarterbacks. I mean, we saw that happen against mm -hmm. Jackson State a couple of weeks ago when they took on Southern. Skelton had good. almost 400 good. yards of total offense That's against right. them. Um, so, I mean, we, we have seen that quarter. happen early. I mean, throughout Pine the season. Bluff. Yeah, Pine Bluff had two quarterbacks yeah. who were who were doing that. And then I can even go back as early as to Morehouse. Morehouse played a two-quarterback system in which both guys knew really how to run the read option on that. So, all right, everyone, with 2.18 to go in the first quarter, your score, Alabama A&M 7, Mississippi Valley State 7. We're going to take a quick break here on the Bulldog Sports Network. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Kicking off for Valley, number 47, Hayden Schuster. Deep for Alabama A&M is number 23, Jerry Qualls. Number 23, Jerry Qualls on the return for Alabama A&M. First and 10 for the Bulldogs from their own 35. Welcome yard back to Swag line. Football here right. on the Bulldog Sports Network. Mo Carter and Reggie two. Reese here inside of Lewis Cruz Stadium decided today's game between Alabama A&M and uh, Mississippi Valley. Mississippi Valley just coming off of a scoring drive that resulted in a short TD line. run by Bryant. Five they just kicked off Alabama A&M. Now has the ball first down to 10 on their own 40 yard line, moving from right to left on your video screen. So, looks like Alabama a has got trips to, to the top. Single receiver down to the bottom. Uh, Kill Glass. He jumped it. He definitely did jump that one. So, I'm looking for a penalty flag. I'm thinking, like, this could be free play, but maybe he got back. And that's a fumble also on between the exchange between the exchange from um, Glass to Quarrel. So, that's a pretty rare sight to see. Very, very rare. So, it looks like. They were shooting for the free play. However, it Second wasn't a free play because I'm guessing the guy did not four. technically get Seven across dogs. in the neutral zone. So, shout out to uh, Gary Quarles for being very smart on that play and picking up uh, that fumble. So, brings up second down and now 11. Same formation once again for Alabama a and Glass still in the shotgun. Looks to the side because Jason Mai is going to hook him up with these special cadences to change the play once again. It's that <laughs> check with me offense. Some people love it. Some people hate it. But, hey, you have to play it. Here we go, Glass. Looking for Quarles right there in the flats. He breaks the tackle. Look at the, the speed. Exactly. That guy is lightning in a bottle. He gets it all the way down to the Mississippi Valley 35-yard line. Ooh, Gary Quarles, the young man from out of the Birmingham area. Well, I'm from Birmingham, too, but real quick, 
when you look at Anim and the way they're attacking this Valley State defense, Anim plays the 4-2 vibe. Valley State kind of plays a similar 4-2-5 system, so they might have figured out how to attack this Valley State defense from their own experiences in practice. Kill Glass stepping back to pass once again. He's trying to go up top, and he's got a man, but is mm. overthrown out of bounds. Actually, Ibrahim was the intended wide receiver on the play. Just a bit too much on it. Just a bit too much on it. Try to bring that pass back down and give your receiver a chance to get those 50-50 balls. What I'm very surprised, though, with is that that's the fourth time that Alabama A&M has tried to go up top to Ibrahim, and they are continuously leaving that defensive back on the top side by himself. They're not giving him any safety help as well. And I'm guessing Coach Manners like, hey, if they keep doing it, go ahead and keep rolling with it. Gary Qualls takes the handoff on the play. He may gain one yard at the most on that one. He was met at the line of scrimmage by number 58, Tadaris Davis on the play. So it'll bring up third down, actually, as a matter of fact. Oh, boy. Let's see what A&M will do here. I'm expecting, oh, they got they're that Jordan up. Bentley? That's Jordan Bentley. That's the Wildcat. No, no, that's no, it's not Jordan Bentley. Oh, it, okay, it's a okay. kill glass. <laughs> okay, I, I got scared for a second. <laughs> I got scared because Coach Maynard will call, will call something crazy. Man, look, you know Maynard's won championships on all levels, and he's probably called all sorts of plays, so I would have not been surprised. But, no, we got a kill glass in the backfield. <laughs> Empty set glass going outside. And it's mm. just out of the reaches of his wide receiver right there, number 88, Jonathan Kill Woods. So brings a fourth down and an interesting play call Jonathan coming up for Woods Coach Maynard and the Bulldogs. You are on the 35-yard line of Mississippi goal, Valley. So all in. intentions look like they're going to go for this play. And, yes, the offense is remaining on the field, bringing in a couple of other personnel changes as well. And there's Jordan Bentley. But Jordan Bentley glass. Please just relax, <laughs> calm down. I see the look on your face. Just relax, call the play. Let's get some yards. All right, trips to the top with a tight end. And actually, Glass will pooch punt it. I've never huh. seen this before. And Zabra and Moore is there. Mm. But he stepped out of bounds, I'm guessing, because where he was at, Kill he thought he might have had full thing. possession instead of tossing pooch it back. Punt. Smart play call, actually, right there by the Bulldogs offense. Actually, I haven't seen the pooch punt this year from A&M. Definitely, definitely caught Mississippi Valley off guard. Well, I'm, I'm sort of lost for words when you bring out the pooch like down. that, but it, it almost worked. It almost worked. It almost did. Definitely almost did on that one. So what, it's a kill glass, a, a mini punter? <laughs> well, I guess, you know, when you're a quarterback, you have to learn all these different plays and formations of what everybody else has to do. So I guess in that standpoint – you become a jack of all trades. I guess then. so. Now, of course, I don't, you know, foresee him being like the next Ray guy, or <laughs> <laughs> you know, or um, stick or the quarterback exactly, or Reggie Roby, or somebody. So this should be the final play of the first quarter. The handoff goes to number twenty, Dwayne Bennett. He is met in the backfield by a host of Alabama A and M Bulldogs, which is led by number forty-eight, Barry. Desmond Jennings. And that'll be the end of the first quarter. Your Alabama score: Alabama A and M seven, the Mississippi Armani Valley Armani Delta Armani. Devil seven. We will take a break and return right. Right here on the Bulldog the Sports score. Network with SWAC football. The score, your Alabama A&M University Bulldogs seven, the visiting Mississippi Valley State University Delta Devils seven. This is bigger. Fans, as a member of the NC2A and the SWAC. Alabama A&M University promotes good sportsmanship by student athletes, coaches, and spectators. We request your cooperation by supporting the participants and officials in a positive manner. Profanity, racial or sexist comment, or other intimidating words or actions directed at officials, student athletes, coaches, or team representatives will not be tolerated and are grounds for removal from this facility. We thank you for being loyal, supportive fans. First and ten for MVSU from their own correction. Second second and nine for MVSU. Can experience what we all deserve. From their twenty one yard line.
Welcome back to Swag Football on the Bulldog Broadcasting Network. Mo Carter and Reggie Rees here inside of Lewis Cruz Stadium, the site of today's game between Alabama a and and Mississippi Valley State. We just kicked off things in the second quarter. There is a penalty on the play that I actually did not catch. What Did you catch that, Reggie? I didn't catch you, but he just sort of went to the ground. Um, so it like, looked like he tried to just kill the play dead because he thought it might have been on Alabama A&M, but I'm guessing that was not the case. So second down now coming up for Mississippi Valley. Bryant still in at the quarterback. He gets a motion, and he will hand it off to his wide receiver. And once again, there is the flag on the play. Oh, boy. False start. You don't want those. That's what you don't want. One of the more disciplined teams in the entire conference, a very rare sighting to see to get a flag called against Valley State. Shakedrick Ross was the guy that is the guilty party on that play. Mississippi so Mississippi Valley yards, going uh, backwards. Uh, Real quick about this Valley State offensive line. That's almost two tons from everyone, everyone for that offensive line unit for Valley State. So I see why Derek Bryan has so many yards on the ground. Absolutely. Speaking of Bryan, he tries to go with the wide receiver screen. He gets it out to his man. However, he is tackled quickly on the play. Not too many yards actually picked up on the play by number 80. Is that 88? 86, as a matter of fact. That is Malik Myers. So third down coming up for the Mississippi Valley Delta Devils coach dancing company trying to draw something up Valley. and trying to take momentum in this game. So the handoff will go to the running back. They, they decide to stick with the rushing attack of a Barnett and he Wayne will Barnett not pick up first down yardage on that uh, one. It'll bring up a punting situation two. for Mississippi Valley. So it looks I'm like this drive in general yeah, just was going backwards and eventually it moved forward like two yards. <laughs> then there was a penalty. <laughs> So now it comes up for a punting situation. So we've got Hilaire stepping back around the 45-yard line to receive the punt for Mississippi Valley. Looks like it's going to be an old-fashioned defense versus defensive battle between these two schools. Of course. We've only had one turnover so far, and that was a pick early on by Mississippi Valley but that didn't turn into anything. So Hilaire will haul it in around his own 45-yard line. He's running backwards, tries to run back oh, forward. Has open uh -oh. lane. Hilaire has an open lane, and he will mm. be just cut down around the 40-yard line by Ray Number Taylor. Six, he slipped that tackle. We're still calling his name and saying five touchdown on that one, but still a great punt return by Hilaire. Alabama a and will start off in Mississippi Valley territory. And Hilaire, the freshman, has had a pretty good season so far. Primarily plays the slot on offense for Coach Maynard's Bulldogs. Of First course, of course, of course. You know, and Hilaire is one of those guys I'm where he's Valley just been itching really just to get his chance. And because we have such a great wide receiving core, he really hasn't been able to get it too much in the wide receiving aspect. So he's been doing it from the kick return and punt return aspect, especially with Brian Jenkins Jr. That's being right. out for the season. But, hey, I was always taught a long time ago, it's the next man up mentality. So whenever the next man has to come up, it's it, the responsibility of that man to right. build his repertoire and show what you can do. Because you only get that one shot. Only one. And, I mean, this receiving core is deep from top to bottom. So, for Hilaire to stand out, down, it's going to really take a maximum effort from him this Alabama season as a freshman to prove I want one playing time as a sophomore. Correct on that one. First half, I mean, first quarter stats to, to tell you about. Akil Glass already has over 100 yards passing and one touchdown. That one touchdown went to Adu Fatai Ibrahim for a long of 47 yards. And they move Bentley outside. Absolutely. We do see Bentley at the bottom of your television screen here. Glass Throw rolling out him. and tries to get mm. it to Bentley, but he comes up about a few yards short on I that one. Would have been interesting to see if Bentley would have made that catch. He only had two guys to really run over <laughs> and then get to the end zone. But that vaunted yeah, Valley State yeah, pass rush has come through Bulldogs. so far on that last play. They, they're trying to get to kill Glass as much as possible, and they're going to try to get back there even, even more. Third down coming up for Alabama A&M. We've got 12.43 to go in the second quarter. We've got a tie ball game, seven for the Bulldogs, seven for the Delta Devils in the season finale for both of these teams. Kill Glass calling his cadence. He's got trips to the bottom, single wide receiver to the top, and they're going to run the option. And look at Glass okay. cutting up, running over <laughs> a man, and he will pick up the first down on that one. So Kill Glass running the read option, and he reads it well, running straight up the middle, and he's got a first down for the Bulldogs. Next time, 
please, just slide. Don't take the hits, just slide. Just we need you, we need you as a senior. <laughs> Absolutely. So here we go. It's the Glass fakes it to Jordan Bentley, goes across the middle, oh, tries to get it to Zabrian Moore. Defender had his hands on him, but there will be no flag called on the play. Zabrian Moore almost came down with that with a one-handed, you got yeah, Moss type catch. <laughs> it was just out of his reaches, though, but comes up to now second down. I'm actually surprised that Bentley didn't actually take the handoff on that because the left side of the field was completely wide open. The defensive end had come down, so there was nobody defending that side of the field. And they're going to call defensive holding as well against Valley State, so that'll move the ball up even further. So that flag must have came out really late because I didn't even see it thrown. So play still results in the first down. I did say the guy got his hands on him. That's true. So first down to 10 now for Alabama a and inside the red zone of Mississippi Valley. Bentley gets it on the option. He shakes a man. He's at the 10, the 5, and he's tackled inside the 5 yard line. Alabama AM is now running the option like five times now. Apparently, Coach Maynard saw something on the film and was like, we can run that option. Well, I mean, it's a quick option to Bentley. Beautiful moves by him, shaking and baking and give pass to um, Valley State cornerback. And he's going to put AM even in a better position to try and score. First and goal coming up for Alabama AM. They are knocking on the door. We see the big heavy set coming in for Alabama A&M. Look to have, what, two, three tight ends, a full back. It, it's a lot of big guys. <laughs> in the heavy package. In there, I mean. <laughs> so here we go. We got to think that the ball's going to go to Jordan Bentley. He does. He follows his blocks, and touchdown. Bentley is in for a touchdown, his first of the day. Jordan Bentley powering through the Valley State defense. Bentley just continues to add to his records for rushing touchdowns, overall touchdowns, and everything else that has a record that Bentley has, minus the longest rushing touchdown, which, who knows, maybe he might be able to bust out a 90-yard touchdown. We'll see. But for right now, Jordan Bentley credited with the touchdown right there from four yards out. Alabama A&M regains the lead. It's now 13-7. to We're waiting for Spencer Corey to put up an extra point. Here comes the extra point. The kick is down. It goes up, and it is good. So with 11.36 to go in good. the second quarter, your new score, Alabama A&M 14, Mississippi Valley's Delta Devils 7. We'll take a quick timeout here on the Bulldog Sports Network. You're watching SWAC football. Alabama A&M fans, tune into WZDX Channel 54 on Sunday night at 11 p.m. for the Alabama A&M Football Review with head coach Connell Maynor and the AAMU Sports Network play-by-play -play announcer Ted Dixie. The Alabama A&M Football Review airs on Sunday night at 11 p.m on WZDX Channel 54. Kicking off for Alabama a and is number 19, Spencer Corey. Kickoff is fair caught by number five for Mississippi Valley, Sedavian Gray. First and ten for Valley from their own 25-yard line. Quarterback is number 16, DeJeric Bryant. Number 23, John Derrick Smith on the carry. 
Welcome back to Swag Football here in Huntsville, Alabama. Mo Carter and Reggie Reese here inside of Lewis Cruz Stadium decided for today's game between Alabama A&M and Mississippi Valley. Alabama A&M just put together a great scoring drive that was capped off by Jordan Bentley, the touchdown maker. And we'll tell you about another record that he just eclipsed as well after this play as a swing pass goes out to the running back. But he's met by a host of Bulldogs on the play, bringing up third down. So, Reggie, we were just informed that now Jordan Bentley is the holder of the season points record, which is 108. So, overall, he now holds seven total records for Alabama A&M on the offensive side. He is the greatest running back in the history of this school. <laughs> My goodness. Now, look, um, if Ulysses Banks is probably listening, um, you know, he may have something to say with that. That's the guy who he broke a bunch of records for. But, uh, you know, you got to think that a guy like Jordan Bentley has been doing it greatly. And, of course, he's not just a talented football player. He's also a talented Brian's student as well. I mean, he's a civil engineering major. He's on the dean's list and honor rolls. And Coach Manor said from day one, basically, at 11 Jordan Bentleys, he, he, not only would he run the world, he'd run FCS. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, he's a leader not only in the classroom but on the field as well. Just a pure student athlete. Absolutely. All right. So Mississippi Valley fails to convert on third down or bring up a punting situation for the Delta Running Devils. Adu Alaire is back Valley. deep once again. Alabama A&M are looking Reed. to try to score some more Boot points and, Alabama you know, take a larger lead going into the halftime break, even though we've got ten minutes left in oh, the second Kirby. quarter. So it's a high, high kick. Hilaire will haul it in around the 25-yard line. He backpedals, picks up some blocks, gets a little stutter step, and looks oh, like Hilaire's he got lane. some room. He's following his blockers, and he's at the 50, and he'll be knocked out around the 45-yard line, so about a 25-yard gain on that one. But I see a late flag coming in. We could have some extracurricular activities going on but it was on the AM sideline so let's see what exactly happened here I mean it was a it was a punt return so the possibilities could be blocking the back maybe that would be my one of my first guesses of course yeah you got you got to think about that but I'm also thinking that like it kind of happened right around the time he got tackled and let's see what it is Unnecessary roughness against the receiving team. Ten yard, fifteen yard penalty. Excuse me. First down. Unnecessary roughness mm -hmm. on Alabama A&M. They did not give a number on the play, but. That basically negates like a great Alabama punt return right there. So now Alabama A&M, instead of starting in Mississippi Valley well, territory, they'll start on their own 39-yard line. You got to think Coach Connell man are not happy about that. I mean, that's just a straight discipline play. Well, he's going to talk to the refs all game long. He's going to talk to them as he again. does always. So as he does always. So. Now, first down and 10 on the own 39-yard line. Akil Glass stepping back to pass. He's got all kinds of time. When I mean all kinds of time, Throwing now he's going to launch it deep. And he's got Xavier on Moore, and he overthrows him near the 10-yard line. They were trying to get Xavier on Moore on the deep post pattern. I mean, he had a few steps, but Bentley, I mean, excuse me, Akil Glass just overthrew it just a tad bit. I mean, Valley State, they played two safeties deep as well, which helped kind of neutralize those types of plays. So, if anything, the safety did give the corner some help, and then as, you know, his receiver went downfield, tried to go down to Abraham Moore, he might have got pulled back just a little bit, but still great defense from Valley State on the secondary. Second down coming up for Alabama A&M. They've got two receivers to the top, single receiver to the bottom, a tight end more in a slot position. Jordan Bentley in the pistol. Kill Glass will now look over to Coach Jason Mai for the check with me, and they're going to change some things up. Play clock down to two seconds, and they hand it off, and they get it over to Jordan Bentley, and Mississippi mm -hmm. Valley was reading Jordan it from Bentley day on one, and they will stop Bentley for a no gainer on that one. Thompson Once again, that Valley State D line, they're coming up big for the Delta Devils, keeping them Third in this game, and that's the one thing you want if you're head coach Dancy. So here we go, third down for Alabama A&M, uh, trips to the near side, single receiver to the top side, Bentley in the backfield with glass. Mississippi Valley They're running a 4-2-5, looks like once again. Corner's playing a lot of zone, though. Glass, he's pressured, and he will be sacked for the first time today by the Mississippi Valley Delta Devils defense. There, he just took way too much time, and he was sacked by number 92, Jerry Garner. So that'll bring, yeah, one of those guys you talked about in the pregame. 
so that'll bring a fourth down and a punting situation yeah, for right. the Bulldogs. And that Valley State defensive line coming up big to shut down a and to prevent any big plays. And that's now 30 total sacks for him so far this season. Once again, still leading the conference. You got to get the ball out quickly against this defensive front. And so I've got a few previous players mm -hmm. under further review. I'm – Kind of curious to see right, exactly man, man. what Don't they're going to review on this one. I mean, did, ZBX, did he lose the ball during the sack or something? For the I, I don't football know. With I'm just as confused Connell as you, to be honest. Maynard. All and right, so our head official is going to head over to the DV Sports area to take a look at what's Dixie, going on here. So just a quick break in the action, you know, we're the A&M Sports Network, but some love to Valley State fellow HBCU, NFL Hall of Famers, one of them being Jerry Rice. The great Jerry Rice, and the guy who threw, who used to throw those passes to him was the one, the only Willie Totten, who's a former Alabama A&M quarterbacks coach here mm. under un, under the reign of Coach James Spade a couple of years ago. Had a chance to actually do a story for my television station that I work mm. for um, about the Satellite Express, and like those guys were tearing it up. I mean, the fact that they literally were running five wide receiver sets when it wasn't really a thing. Now, there's always a big argument about yeah. who, you know, actually created some things and whatnot, but you have to actually go back to, like, Miles Davis and Hal Mummy a little bit before Archie Cooley and company. But Archie Cooley and them, they made it cool to, to run <laughs> that as well. But, no, they've had a lot of great um, – uh, they've had a lot of great guys who went on to play in the NFL. Of course, Jerry Rice was one of them. Uh, Coach Willie Totten played for the Buffalo Bills. He also mm. played in the CFL. They also had um, Ashley Ambrose, who played for the New Orleans Saints for a while. Mm. And then if you go all the way back, they had the man who created the head slap. It was Deacon Jones. <laughs> Not only did he create the head slap, I'm almost certain he was probably one of the first NFL players way, way back in the day that actually was, like, talking trash and people looking back at him like, what in the world are you talking about? I mean, one of the greatest players in L.A. Rams history. Absolutely. Um, God, what, what was that? What, the Fearsome Foursome. That's right. The Fearsome Foursome. He was the leader of the Fearsome Foursome. Well, going back to Willie Totten, 1984, 58 passing touchdowns. And remember, this 58. was still – And this was a time where, like, running the ball was still a big thing. I mean, a lot of the major teams were still running the option in general. And this dude was throwing for 58 touchdowns. Under the gunslinger, Archie Cooley. <laughs> 59 points per game. A&M, they can score points, but 50. That, oh, no, no, that, I don't know if that, can do that. That thing was out of, out of this world. I mean, back then, of course, nobody would have known what, it, what this would have meant, but they were putting up video game numbers back then before video games were really even a thing. Whew. I mean, Nintendo was just getting into the fold. And they didn't really even have Super Tecmo Bowl around there. I think Super Tecmo Bowl was still like a year or two behind them. <laughs> So you, you got to think, you know, that was like the Mario and Donkey Kong days <laughs> in general. All right, we're still waiting on to see what happened on this instant replay and what was under further review. After further review, the ruling on the field stands. There's no targeting on this play. Fourth down. All right, so they were doing an instant, repl instant replay to see if there was targeting on the play. Um... I mean, I didn't really see a Mississippi Valley Fourth defender down, really charge forward A &M. towards Glass the on that sack, but apparently they must have saw something that we Spencer didn't. I mean, if Coach Maynard was here right now, he'd probably look at you funny because he's talking to the rest right now wondering <laughs> what's going <laughs> on. So, <laughs> Man, Mo, you got to look at all these different angles <laughs> and what happens on all these different plays. Mm -hmm. That's why you couldn't be a football coach. Oh, no. <laughs> I guarantee you he would probably tell me that. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, like, I have a whole lot of respect for football. Co actually, any athletic coach, because I know yeah. what the time and dedication actually goes into it. I mean, my dad was my peewee and middle school coach, and, I mean, he put a lot of time and dedication into it. I mean, he worked in the school system, so, you know, you think about a school system and then doing all those different things. I mean, yeah, so remember, they, th these football coaches, it's a job, job and for flag. them. Exactly. As on the punt return, that is Jerry's Clayton, and a late flag does Jerry's come in. So let's see what's going on with this. But Alabama great punt there by number 19, Spencer Corey. Penalty he did put him back way field. deep, but there's a penalty flag. Let's see what's coming up. Well, my dad, he was also my coach back when I was a kid as well, so I understand entirely too. Absolutely, man. 
Absolutely, especially when you work your eight to five, and then you come and then you coach, Ooh. and mm. then got to put food on the table. Man, it's a lot. It definitely is a lot. Scouting on the right. Mm. The block occurred from the side. Looks like there is no penalty on the play. Apparently, they thought it might have been a block in the back, but the block was actually on the side. So, with that being said, Mississippi Valley will take over first down to 10 on their own 29-yard line. Well, let's see if the Jared Bryant can carry this offense one more time. Let's see what Valley State will call this time. They've ran a couple option plays for him alone to run behind his offensive lineman. Will they do the same thing here, running shotgun? We shall see Bryant in the backfield. Line. And he will call his mm. own number on that one, but he is wrapped this up by number 20, Armani Holloway. Number 16. Holloway leading his team in tackles, keeper. and that's what you got to do. Wrap 20, up. Don't do the flashy hits. Just wrap them up Armani and bring them to the ground. Exactly, because a flashy hit, somebody can absorb that, bounce off, and then hit the sidelines. I've yeah. seen that happen way too many times in my lifetime. Oh, boy. Way too many times. The play did result for about one yard, so second down and nine coming up for Alabama A&M. Bryant still in the backfield. He's got trips to the top with a slot man, single back in the in the backfield, and a single wide receiver at the bottom. So Bryant calling his cadences, stepping back to pass, and he will be pressured. Looks like he's just going to run and call his own number, and he may pick up about two yards on the play before being tackled by Drayvon Carter on the play. Brings up third down now for Mississippi Valley. Well, I mean, he, he kind of had to scramble there because the a and pass rush was coming really, really quickly, especially from his blind side. So to just get upfield and get those yards, good awareness by him. Third down coming up for Mississippi Valley. We've got 7.20 to go in the first half. Bulldogs up 14-7 to seven over the Delta the Devils in the SWAC finale for both MBSU. schools on a gloomy, rainy day here in – oh. oh, Bryant almost Bryant. intercepted by <laughs> – Alabama A&M on the play. That's one of those plays where if it hits you in the hands, you should be able to pick it up. And unfortunately, that was not the case for A&M's defender on that one. Jonathan Struggs, you had it in your hands. You got to bring that down. That's a pick six. It is a pick six. There is nobody in front of him. All he had was space and opportunity in front of him for a perfect opportunity. Now, the next perfect opportunity is a punting situation for Mississippi <laughs> Valley, and a and will get the ball back once again. Yeah, so you got to think Jonathan's probably going to get an earful from Coach Shelley mm -hmm. That's right. and Coach Alabama Eastman on that one. A&M bringing a little pressure, but they are able to get the ball off. Adu Hilaire is, slips one tackle. He's at the 45. He'll get knocked out around the 50-yard line, and this time there's no penalty flag on the punt return. Good. Uh, please. You got to get those yards. You got to avoid putting yourself in holes that you can't dig yourself out of. Absolutely. And, of course, it's um, – coaches used to tell me this all the time. There's always, you know, penalties, line. basically uh, penalties that go against yourself that you shouldn't do, self-inflicted wounds. That's right. That's exactly what they are, self-inflicted wounds of the football game. Luckily, that wasn't the case there. So we got first down to 10 uh, near the midfield stripe for Akil Glass and the Alabama a &M offense. He's got double twins to the top and to the bottom, and he's got Jordan Bentley in the backfield. He, the play fake to Bentley, he throws it out, and mm. the pass is caught by one of his tight ends on the play. That is Anthony Howard. Yeah, Howard comes up with a first down on that one. He's not the most agile guy in the world, but when he's got the ball in open space, it'll be hard to tackle him, as you saw right there. That's another A&M first down. Absolutely. Let's move those chains as we hear Mr. McIntosh in the background with that first, first down. down. <laughs> so here we go on the play. Jordan Bentley cutting across the middle, running over two people before he picks up what appears to be another first down, and that's what it is. So you hear Mr. McIntosh again with the first down in the background. Great hole opened up by the A&M offensive line. Great hole to lead Jordan Bentley to get the first down. Alabama A&M running the tempo, and Coach Dancy says, I've got to call a timeout. So we're going to take a timeout with them with 6.20 to go in the half. Alabama A&M leads 14-7. to You're listening to Swag Football here on the Bulldog Sports Network. selection of new Kias, including the new 2020 Kia Telluride. As for Arthur Seaton, managing partner, we want to see you in a Kia. Go Bulldogs! Don't be hit hard with low trade offers.
Clear pass is complete to number eight, Xavier Moore. Stopped by number one for Valley, Tracy Tompkins. Welcome back to Swag Football on the Bulldog Sports Network. Mo Card and Reggie Reese here at Lewis Cruz Stadium for Alabama A&M versus Mississippi Valley. Bulldogs on the move inside the red zone. Akil Glass facing a second and two with his team. He throws a quick screen out to a dude for Ty Ibrahim. Ibrahim carrying a couple of defenders near the 10-yard line, and they will move those chains. Once again, it will be first down once again for Alabama A&M. Valley State went to single high safety, but they did a good job to prevent any sort of breakaway touchdown to happen as they still had three defenders to the near side to stop the play. So here we go, first down to 10 inside the 15-yard line for Alabama A&M. They've got a trip to the top side, single receiver to the bottom. Jordan Bentley remains in the backfield. He just set a single-season points record for Alabama A&M as he takes the handoff here, and he'll be tackled, but not before picking up about four yards on the play. That Record we just talked about, single season points record. He now has 108, but another record is actually in jeopardy. Um, one more career passing touchdown mm. for Akil Glass will tie him for another mark, thanks to information given to us by the one and only Justin Gray. So let's see if they're going to get a passing touchdown or a scoring touchdown on this drive here. It'll be interesting to see Valley's defense. You got to think that, you know, they didn't bend but break. Alabama a and trying to break them down. So three to the top, one to the bottom. Here it is, Glass. He's running the option, pitches it out to Jordan Bentley. Bentley barrels <laughs> over a man. He collides with number six, Keontae on Daniels, the on the play. That Daniels definitely, he, he did a good job down. still wrapping up, but he's going to feel Daniels. that. He still needed some help to bring down Bentley, too. Right. But he's going to feel that <laughs> once he goes to the side. He's not going to feel it right now. It's not until he gets into a more of a comfortable state that he's going to feel that. So third down now for Alabama A&M. They're knocking on the door inside the 10-yard line. They're showing blitz right here. I think they might bring seven. Yeah, they may bring seven and go man-to-man -man across the board. Moore's got single coverage at the top, but – Kill Glass tries to go to the end zone, and that's a touchdown catch right there by Kendrick Johnson. Touchdown, Bulldogs. And with that touchdown, Akil Glass has now tied the career TD passing mark with 56 in his career here on the hill with Alabama A&M. That's called a dime right there. Kill Glass, great placement. Almost, almost picked off, but the perfect pass beats the perfect defense. And you called it that. They were probably going to go man-to-man, -man, so Akil was looking for the mismatch on that one. So when you have a big tight end that's about 6'3", going up against a DB that can't be more than six foot, I'll, I'll take my chances on that tight end every single day. It's almost like, you know, putting a Gronk or a Jimmy Graham out, flexing him out as the yeah. single wide receiver, and that's exactly what happened on that play. So with 3.50, to go in the third quarter. Our new score is Alabama A&M 21, Mississippi Valley 7. We will take a short break here with SWAC football on the Bulldog Sports Network. is number five, Cedrin Gray, and number 14, Donald Johnson. Number five, Cedrin Gray on the return. Welcome back to Swag Football on the Bulldog Sports Network. Mo Carter and Reggie Reese here in Huntsville for today's Alabama A&M. Bulldogs versus the Mississippi Valley Delta Devils football game in the SWAC finale. Alabama A&M uh, just had a scoring drive 
which resulted in a touchdown pass by Akil Glass. And with that pass, he now is tied for the career mark for all-time touchdown passes, and he ties a pretty good one in Kelsey Luke. He had kept, for anyone that does not remember Kelsey Luke, he played in the mid-2000s. I actually played against this guy. Big, strong quarterback, actually similar size to what Akil Glass was as far as prototype and just playing style and whatnot. He might have been a little bit more agile than um, – <laughs> than Glass. However, he is also the last Bulldogs quarterback to lead Alabama A&M to a SWAC, swag championship. championship. Okay. So, but yeah, big strong guy as well. So, Kill Glass is now tied for career touchdown passes with the one and only Kelsey Luke. All right, Mississippi Valley running an end around, I mean, running a Running a play around the left side, however, they're going to be backed up because there was a holding penalty call on that one. And you don't want to see that. You're already down three touchdowns to begin with. You can't let the penalties. Two touchdowns. I mean, sorry, two touchdowns to begin I see 21, so <laughs> I think three touchdowns. You're already down two touchdowns to begin with. You can't dig yourself in the in a deeper hole than what you're already in. you got to just get some consistency going and just – Get points in any way you can. You can't put yourself in a hole like this. Absolutely. So they'll back them up on that one. So second down and long coming up for Bryant and Mississippi Valley. Bryant stepping back to pass. He gets a little pressure. Oh. Looks like he's going to scoot out, but somebody's running him down. Eventually he throws it out. Looks like that's Johnson there in the flat. Johnson will get back near Bryant the original Bryant. line of scrimmage before being knocked out by a host of Bulldogs on that one. Johnson. I mean, he had a little shimmy move, you know, trying to get away from his offensive lineman and created himself his own space. Really, really good awareness by Bryant. But it's still third and long for the Valley State Delta Dills. All right, it looks like there's going to be a timeout on the field, but we will stay with you right here. We are under three minutes, 249 to be exact here in Huntsville for the season finale with Reggie. I still cannot believe, I still remember being at Swag Media Days when Coach was talking about the excitement surrounding this football team. And now we're basically at the end of a very wild season that basically kept everybody on the edge of their seat from beginning to end. The cardiac Bulldogs, we talked about it in the last, in the last game, me, me and you, and almost every game, overtime, double overtime, 40-point game, 50-point game. It was insane who how get, much of the ball who last. Who gets the ball last? <laughs> it was just a crazy season the whole way through. But he has to feel really proud about this team because it's still a winning season regardless, and you can still carry this momentum going into next season and possibly maybe unseat Alcorn officially. Maybe so. Of course, that's always going to be the goal for Coach Manor. They've got to find a way to play with the elites, the Southerns, the Gramblers, and the Allhorns. Right. Yeah, this year, they life. all had lead <laughs> against all those teams. He had a lead. And on this play right here, it looks like Bryant is going to run out of time, and he is sacked on the play by Mason Ellis. Young and man from sack for senior day. Right. Young man from out of Fife, Alabama, football powerhouse out there in Class 2A. Actually, we had somebody – out in Fife last night, and if you look at the highlights from the Fife game, man, look, it was Fog Bowl 2.0. I don't know how they were seeing that football. So, you know, he's got a lot of people who came out from that area as well. But Mason Ellis comes up with the huge sack, and uh, that'll bring up a fourth down in the punting situation for Mississippi Valley. Well, you know, A&M, real quick, you know, they got some Hall of Famers. They got seven NFL Hall of Famers, and one of them being John Stallworth. Well, well wait. Well, the state has seven Hall NFL Hall of Famers. What I'm saying, well, no, John Stallworth's the only NFL Hall, Hall of Famer, Famer from A and M. Gotcha, I got gotcha. you. Okay, Robert Mathis is, should be going into the he Hall. He should of fame. be, but hey, congrats. Speaking of Robert Mathis, congratulations to him. He is going into the Black College Football Hall of Fame in February. He was by far the unanimous pick on that one. Matter of fact, when you look at some of the people who are on that list, everybody deserves to be it. Of course, you know you can only take so many at a time. But yeah, Robert Mathis. Sack master here at Alabama A&M back in the day. As a matter of fact, I remember seeing Robert Mathis in action when he took on when A&M took on Southern University in the Circle City Classic back in 2002. I'll never forget. I rode the RV with some of my family members. We went up there, and unfortunately for Southern, their starting quarterback and backup quarterback, which is Quincy Richard and Tony Fisher, were both out. So Southern was playing a third string quarterback who should have never seen the field <laughs> against a vaunted A&M defense led by that sack master um, 
Robert Mathis, I remember that was just one play. Mathis just ran him down and, like, crushed him. He fumbled. They took it back, and A&M ended up winning that game. I remember telling my my uncle, I was like, uncle, number 55 is good. (laughs) And then, you know, later on that year, we were like, well, Robert Mathis being drafted by the Indianapolis coach. You got to think Tony Dungy had to be somewhere in that stadium was looking like, we need to get that guy. And because of his contributions, it led to six straight SWAC East championships for the Bulldogs in that era as well after him. Correct. Absolutely. So, you know, Robert Mathis laying the foundation for the time in which A&M was making the Division One transition to the SWAC as well. Remember, they were still in an early SWAC program when he was playing, and he was definitely one of those that helped, you know, get the Bulldogs to SWAC championships during that time. Another guy, too, that came after him on the offensive side, Kelsey Luke, as we mm. talked about. He led him to them to a SWAC championship, and – his record for career TD passes has now been tied by one Akil Glass, who on this play right here, Glass will pick up maybe a yard as he's flushed out the pocket on that one. I know A&M Bulldog fans sometimes have been hard on Glass and whatnot, but you cannot discredit what this guy has done as far as offense production. It all goes back to the coaching staff. Well, numbers never lie, and I mean, he's been the most efficient quarterback in the conference this year, and he only built on a really good year from last season throwing 20 touchdowns and nine picks with 29 touchdowns and nine interceptions this year. Third down coming up for Alabama A&M Glass with three receivers to the bottom side, two to the top, so he's in the empty backfield. Calling the cases looks like Mississippi Valley is going to only rush three on this play, so Glass will have a lot of time. He throws it out, and it is caught right there by Ryan Stoles, the hero of the Jackson State game. Remember, Ryan Stoles only had like ten plays going into the entire (laughs) season until he caught that big touchdown against Jackson State that was the deal-breaker in the comfort-behind victory. And his contributions helped put A&M in a position to possibly win the Swag East title against Alcorn for the next game but they fell short Down against Alcorn State. Absolutely. So, Glass stepping back to pass once again, and uh, the pass is dropped right there by Hadou Alaire on that one. It was in the bread basket, but he just didn't hold on. Maybe he tried to run before he caught it. Maybe. But this Valley State defense, they hit really, really hard. And once again, another hard hit coming from the corner on the last play. And, look, you hit on it, man. Valley State's defense, yes, they've given up the big plays. But when you look at individuals-wise, they have two of the top, what, six or seven sack leaders. Yes, right. So, apparently, they're doing something good up front. They're doing something right. But A&M still leads 21-7. to So, you got to you got to pick up on it just a little bit more. But there's a flag on the play. I'm a 61. The guilty party on this full start is number 61, Dexter Fuqua. Young man from out of Tanner, Alabama. I was actually at his signing day. He was really, really excited about going to Alabama A&M. And now he is a starting offensive lineman. He was playing for those Tanner Rattler teams who were making those deep runs towards Super 7 championships. So here we go, Glass stepping back to pass. Got all the time in the world, and he's going deep. What and look catch. who catches it, Hadou Hilaire on that one. He dropped the previous pass, but he's not going to drop that one. They're moving the chains because that's the first down for Alabama A&M. The little man making the big play. Slot receiver, don't really see him go deep, but that time came up really big for a kill Glass and the Bulldogs. When you look at this wide receiver court across the board, you don't have any seniors. No, you don't. You do not have any seniors. So when you're talking about offensive weapons that – Glass will have next year. It's he's got the well basically. It's scary. Exactly. All right. So Glass tries to throw it down the field, but the play, the ball falls incomplete. Cameron Young. Cameron Young are looking for a flag on that one, but no dice on that play. I think even Akil Glass was looking for the flag too. Well, you know, again, keep your composure, stay calm, running a really good drive. I think they might do some slant routes right here with the five receiver set. Maybe so. Mississippi Valley's defense, the defensive backs, everybody's at least five to seven yards back. It looks like there's going to be a timeout, but we're going to stay on the broadcast with you. 32.9 seconds to go. Alabama A&M leading Mississippi Valley 20-7 to here in the SWAC finale for both schools as well. Just to kind of recap some things on what's happened throughout the day. Alabama A&M getting on the board early with a 47-yard touchdown pass from Akil Glass to Adu Fatai Ibrahim. Mississippi Valley would respond with a generic Bryant three-yard touchdown run. It was 7-7 to after the first quarter. In the second quarter, it was Jordan Bentley's show, basically. They basically rolled Jordan Bentley. Remember, we don't have a Ford, we don't have a Jaguar. We've got a Bentley. They rolled him all the way down into the end zone, and with that touchdown 
touchdown. He now set a record for most points scored in the season with 108. And then later on, Alabama A&M extended their lead with a touchdown pass from Akil Glass to his tight end, Kendrick Johnson on that one. And with that touchdown pass, Akil Glass tied the all-time career TD passing record, which is also held by Kelsey Luke. So right now, 32.9 seconds. They're trying to get some more points before they go into the half. Alabama A&M moving from left to right on your video screen. Thanks for everyone joining us on the digital broadcast here on the Bulldog Sports Network. Empty backfield for Akil Glass. Stepping back to clap pass. It's Glass. He's pressured. He's going to throw it deep. He's got a man, and that's Zabron Moore. He's got the catch. Touch Touchdown, to Bulldogs. What a pass. What a pass. Wow. What a catch, and what kind of concentration Zabron Moore coming up with the big pass play that results in a touchdown on that one. My goodness, and then a kill Glass. He was going to get sacked at first because the, the pass rush was coming, but he just shifted over to the left a little bit, planted his feet, squared up, and delivered a perfect pass for only Xavier Moore could catch it. Touchdown, Bulldogs. Now, the referee says touchdown, but they're kind of grouping up together. They might go to review. Well, all scoring plays are, are reviewable. They review all scoring plays and all turnovers. And they're still talking down there in the end zone. They really are talking this mm -hmm. one out. Looks like they're going to let it stand as a touchdown from what it seems. That's what it is. So it was confirmed as a touchdown. So it's now 26 to 7 with 24.6 seconds to go in the, the first Corey. half. Spencer Corey coming on for the extra point. Here's a snap. Fake. And guess what? They're going to fake it. Spencer Corey getting outside, and he's into the end zone for the two point conversion. Would you look at that? He has some wheels on him. He does. <laughs> Coach Manor going into the bag of tricks. There and the kicker outruns the Valley defense for the two point conversion, so they're now up 28 to 7. How about that? He's not afraid to try anything, absolutely <laughs> not, man. Absolutely not. And remember, Spencer Corey is one of those seniors, too, as That's well. That's right, he's one of those seniors. So let the seniors have some fun, yeah. Let them have some fun, let them, you know, celebrate. But, huh, okay. Fake field goal to the to the kicker. All right. Absolutely. So let's kind of recap what just happened here. Xavieron Moore catches the touchdown pass. With that touchdown pass, Akil Glass now has the record for career touchdown passes here at Alabama A&M. He surpasses Kelsey Luke, a great Alabama A&M quarterback from the mid 2000s. Akil Glass now has that record. Congratulations to Glass on that. And remember, he's still a junior, which means that he can come back <laughs> for his senior year and basically, like, just destroy the record book to where nobody's going to, you know, get, get close to it. But then knowing what Coach Connell Manning would do, he can turn around and bring another great quarterback in there, and then he can probably break Glass's record. Or another well. great running back. Or another great running back, too. So we shall see, everybody. But, of course, you take everything day by day. So we're going to stay right here today, 28-7, to 7, 25 seconds to go in the first half. Alabama A&M now up 28-7 to 7 on the Delta Devils of Mississippi Valley State. Spencer Corey kicking it off, and he's going to kind of squib it down the field. Almost bobbled it when he tried to pick it up. Almost did bobble it there. That's Donald Johnson, the third, and he will not get past the 30-yard line on the play. So that's where they'll take over near the 30-yard line of their own. 16.5 seconds to go in the half. Now, coming up at halftime, Reggie and I will give you a quick analysis of what we saw in the first half. And then after that, we will step away while you enjoy the sights and sounds of the marching maroon and white of Alabama A&M. The band, they're here. They're in the back of the end zone. That's why you didn't hear them play after the recent touchdown because they're getting ready to put on their final football show of the season. Well, Xavier Moore just eclipsed 1,000 yards receiving as well as closing in on double-digit touchdowns for the year as well. So, once again, a great effort by him. Another spectacular catch. Look, it's going to be amazing to see what, um, what happens 
when it comes to these postseason awards because yeah. you got to think Akil Glass is going to be first team. Jordan Bentley is going to be first team. Dude Fatai Ibrahim is going to be first team. Xavier Moore has got to be first team because you're talking about four guys who are either at the top of their individual rankings or – within the top three of their individual rankings. And then here's another thing. Who does the coaching staff even put up for player of the year? That's another thing that I'm, like, very curious to see. And who knows what that is. So time has run out here in the first half. Alabama A&M leading 28-7 over Mississippi Valley. Quick recap of what you've seen through the first half, Reggie. Well, so far, Valley State's coming in here. They had a really good game plan at the beginning, but A&M kind of figured it out. They run the same defense, so A&M figured out how to attack. You know, Valley State's 4-2-5. But for the Delta Devils, if they want to get back in this game, calm down on the penalties. You're still in it. It's a 28-7 game. It's not impossible to come back. We've seen teams do it time and time again. But for A&M, good job offensively. Like I said earlier, you got to score early. you got to score often. And that's exactly what they did as the Bulldogs now have 28 points up on this Valley State defense. All right, everyone. We will let you enjoy the sights and sounds of the marching maroon and white of the Alabama A&M marching band. We will return right before the third quarter with Swag Football. I'm Mo Carter. He's Reggie Reese. Enjoy the halftime show, and we'll be back with you to get things going in the third quarter right here with Swag Football on the Bulldog Sports Network. the marching maroon and white will now bring you downfield to stop by the brothers Johnson. Ladies and gentlemen, you are now being entertained by your favorite band's favorite band. This time, we would like to take a moment to recognize our senior bandsmen who have come to the end of the road with their time in the marching maroon and white band. These remarkable young men and women are irreplaceable and will sorely be missed. Mr. 
the Bull Run the Hall. Hall. Mellophone is Green Bay from Memphis, Tennessee, White Haven High School. Major is music performance. His future plans are to perform with the Hollywood Cruise Line with the BB King All Star Band. Miss Michaela Vaughn, alto saxophone, from Mobile, Alabama, BC Rain High School, and the major is sociology. Future plans after graduation is to strive to become a policy analyst and get a master's degree in education to branch out into counseling of the youth. Miss Serena Dixon, Piccolo, Birmingham, Alabama, Huffman High School. Major is criminal justice, minor in sociology. Future plans are to start a career in criminal justice, working to become a crime scene investigator or FBI agent. Mr. Jesse Armin. Instrument is baritone from Atlanta, Georgia, Clarkson High School. Major is electrical engineering with a concentration in micro electronics. Future plans are to begin a career at NASA. Ms. Laquandra Thoreau, instrument is instrument trombone, is trombone from, Anniston, from Anniston, Alabama. Alabama. High school is Oxford High School. High school. Major, major is psychology, psychology with a minor in criminal, criminal justice. justice. Future plans future are to pursue a degree, degree, a master's, a master's degree, degree, and doctor degree, degree to become a clinical psychologist. Ms. Letitia Friday, baritone from Stone Mountain, Georgia, and Stone Mountain High School. Major is major music is education, education, and future plans future are to plans become a high school band director, director and earn a master's degree, degree in music theory at Florida State, Florida State University. University. Mr. Jeremy Mr. the Goat Golston, hair drum, drum major and trumpet player and from Birmingham, Alabama, Alabama, Alabama majoring in major civil, civil engineering. engineering. Future plans future are plans to are work in the environmental engineering industry and to improve safety and investment of the environment. Miss Tatiana, Tatiana Jack, Tatiana Jack trombone, trombone from Augusta, from Augusta Georgia, Georgia High School is the Academy the of Richmond, of Richmond County, County High School. High school. Major, is, Major psychology. is psychology. Future plans, Future plans are to attend Tennessee, to attend State, Tennessee University State University to get a to master's in counseling and aspire, and aspire to become a child, child psychologist. Mr. Justin Hamid, instrument is percussion, cymbals from Birmingham, Alabama, minor high school. Major is nutrition and hospitality management with a minor, minor in business, business administration. administration. Future plans, Future plans are, to are to enlist in the United States Army United Reserve upon pr- pr- completing basic, basic training, training to return to, return to Alabama a and to, to, to receive an MBA. MBA. Ms. Kayla Jones, Jones, clarinet, clarinet from Birmingham, from Alabama, 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 Future plans, future plans are to work towards a doctorate degree to become a child psychologist and also to become a family therapist counselor. Miss Alyssa Law, fabulous flag, from Mobile, Alabama, Blunt High School. Major is social work. Plans to uh, obtain a master's in social work from Alabama A&M University. Miss Kalia Knox, fabulous flag, from Birmingham, Alabama, Hoover High School. Majoring in psychology, entrepreneurship, organizational psychologist. Future plans are to solve workplace problems and improve the quality of life. Miss Tatiana Marsh, fabulous flag, from Ozark, Alabama, Carroll High School. Major is criminal justice, plans to pursue a career with the FBI agency. Miss Charity McCall, trumpet, from Montgomery, Alabama, Robert E. Lee High School. Double majoring in criminal justice and psychology. Upon graduation, plans to ascend, uh, attend South Texas College of Law in Houston and intern alongside a criminal defense law firm. One day aspires to own her own law firm, specializing as a criminal defense attorney. Mr. D. Anthony McCreary, baritone from Birmingham, Alabama. From Jackson Olin High School, major is art, graphic design, plans to become part of the animation and or game design industry, and plans to donate funds back to the band and his college chapter of Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated. Mr. Quentin C. Nickerson, trumpet French horn from Birmingham, Alabama, Centerpoint High School, major is humanities and behavioral science with a concentration in music education and performance. Plans to pursue a master's degree in music composition. 
Mr. Malik Randolph instrument is saxophone from Phoenix City, Alabama. Central High School major is social work, plans on going into the military and working for veteran affairs. Mr. Matthew Rice, baritone from Tuscaloosa, Alabama, Paul W. Bryan High School. Major is construction management. Future plans are to be a head contractor of an arch arch architecture or building company and to have his own company one day. Mr. Garland Rutledge, trombone from Chattanooga, Tennessee. Major is music business and plans on obtaining a MBA with concentration in legal studies. Miss Lanisha Smith, trombone, Birmingham, Alabama, from Tarrant High School, major is animal science and plans on owning her own vet clinic. And Mr. Sterling Thomas, alto saxophone from Eufaula, Alabama, Eufaula High School, major is business management with a concentration in management information systems, plans to obtain a career in software development and analytics. Miss Kayla Tuck, dancing diva captain from Birmingham, Alabama, and Ramsey High School. Major is mathematics. Plans to pursue her dance career while attending graduate school as a teacher's assistant and to possibly become a math teacher. And last but certainly not least, Miss Liana Wells, instrument is trumpet from Birmingham, Alabama, George Washington Carver High School. Her major is general music and plans to attend graduate school and work towards a degree in education. Thank you, class of 2020 and beyond, for your loyal and dedication to the Marching Maroon and White Band program. You started here, and now you can go anywhere. May God bless and order your steps. Ladies and gentlemen, please give these seniors a round of applause. And now the Marching Maroon and White will play Boys to Men, End of the Road. Thank you again, class of 2020. And can they please have another round of applause for all of their hard work and dedication to Alabama A&M University and the Marching Maroon and White Band program. On behalf of our president, Dr. Andrew Houdini, Jr., and the Alabama A&M University Board of Trustees, we say thank you for an awesome 2019 season, and we'll see you in football for season 2020.
Welcome back to SWAG Football here on the Bulldog Sports Network. Mo Carter and Reggie Reese back with you, everyone, inside of Lewis Cruz Stadium, getting you ready for the second half of today's game between Alabama A&M and Mississippi Valley. I, a halftime score, Bulldogs up 28-7, to and uh, they jumped out to that lead late in the second quarter with back-to-back -back scoring drives by Jordan Bentley and Akil Glass scoring those touchdowns. Well, let's see what A&M can do right here. They have the advantage going into halftime. They have a lots of momentum, but Valley State starts off with the football, so we'll see if the Delta Devils can regain some of that lost 43. momentum from the first half. Absolutely. So here we go. Coming on for the kickoff and receiving it back deep is a Mississippi Valley. <laughs> the Valley kickoff return actually ran over his own on man five, on that one. That was to Gray Devin Gray. He's like, get out of my way. I'm trying to get Valley. up the field. And you're moving <laughs> He's trying to move him out the way. That kind of didn't work because he got tripped up right Josh after that. Crawford. No, it did not. But he still got some decent yards, so Valley State has some pretty good field position to start off on offense. All right, taking a look at a couple of first-half stats, the stat line as far as total yards and everything else is basically dominated by Alabama A&M. Total yards for the Bulldogs, 284. 221 of those yards were passing by Kiel Glass. He's already thrown for three touchdowns today. Jordan Bentley leads all rushers with 69 on the ground. Um, well, 69 gain, net 64, and he's already got a touchdown on the ground. And let's get back to the action right here as Mississippi Valley moving the ball down the field. A quick screen pass was thrown out to Caleb Johnson, and he picks up a ton of yardage on that play. And that's a first down for Mississippi Valley. Delta Devil trying to catch the Alabama A&M Bulldog defense off guard, and they just did do that. And they got a new quarterback in. That's Roger Totten the second. Roger first Totten the second. You know, with a last name not Totten, he's got to be a pretty good quarterback, right? Quarterback got to be. Let's see. Totten throws out the quick screen to his wide receiver. That is caught by a number 81, Marcus Kidd, and he'll pick up about – a yard on the play at most. I'm not even – actually, it might have been a half yard at that. So, Alabama – excuse me, Mississippi Valley switching things up. They're going away from their previous quarterback, which was the Jarek Johnson and going with Titan Roger Titan the second. I know the folks down there in the Mississippi Delta have to love the fact that there's a Titan playing quarterback. I mean, I know this can't be Coach Titan's son, so it's got to be a relative somewhere because I know Coach Titan has daughters. Well – he is throwing more than what Jared Bryant did in the first half, so he might have that gunslinger type of arm. We're going to find out. Maybe so. Maybe so. But, yeah, actually, you know, across the state of Mississippi and really in the entire Southwestern Athletic Conference, when you hear that last name, you automatically think about Willie Titan of the Saddle Lodge Express. This gentleman. Of course, Coach Titan was here at Alabama A&M for a couple of years. He was the quarterback's coach that actually bought in one Akil Glass. And it looks like we have an instant replay situation coming up. I actually couldn't hear what the um, referee was saying primarily because the bands were playing. They kind of split the bands up so they, half the band is on the home side now, half the band is on the away side. I've seen the school do this multiple times in games in which, you know, there aren't, there isn't a visiting band. So they could have maybe a mini Yeah, a mini battle. battle going back and forth. Yeah, give you some kind of feeling of the real tight football game going on. Other other scores are going on around the swag, though. Texas Southern and Pine Bluff, they won't start until 3 o'clock Central Time. Alcorn State beats Jackson State 7 nothing at the end of the first. As far as everywhere else across the country, Auburn wins against Sanford 52-0. Notre Dame, they just tied the game up against Boston College at seven apiece. Appalachian State's up seven to three. And Indiana, they're on upset alert against Michigan as Indiana is seven and three on the season. Okay, so I'm not exactly sure what they were trying to review just now because the referee didn't really even say anything. So we're just going to pretend like that just didn't happen. Second we're going to roll back with second <laughs> down and <laughs> 10 NDSG. for Mississippi Valley. Totten in the backfield. He calls his own number, slips a couple of tackles, runs it to his man, and actually was technically Titan, tackled by his own man, but not before he picks up a first down for the Delta Devils. Well, that's another quarterback that can run, so they might call his number one more time, a big first down run first for the Delta 10, Devils. Mississippi Valley. Absolutely. So here we go. First down and 10 for the Delta Devils inside the 30-yard line. Titan will hand off to uh, Johnson, and Johnson will be tackled 
may Between have got a gain of one Johnson, just on the actual on spot. The Gary, four, MD, Three point Carter two. coming in with the big tackle. Got by number nine, he's for Alabama, Alabama and still M's. second and ten. Perfect, perfect, perfect. 1344 to go in the third quarter. Alabama AM up 28 to 7 on the Delta Devils. Second Devils down. marching down the field on their first drive of the second half. Handoff goes to Johnson, and Johnson will be run down from behind by Delmore Russell. He'll pick up about three yards on the play. Caleb Third Johnson down coming up. Gary. And Caleb Johnson, he's starting to eclipse the 100 yards three. rushing on the Alabama season. Only one, only one rushing lock. touchdown all year long. And you think for a guy who is the main back of an offense, one touchdown, Third that down. is absurd. Six I mean, I know running backs go. in full spread pass raid offenses that still get at least double-digit touchdowns. And he's averaging four yards a carry, so Still pretty, pretty unusual sight to see. Ball started right there on Mississippi Valley, so they'll be backed up five yards on that one, taking a look over at Coach Dancy on the sideline. And all he's doing is just shaking his head, knowing that <laughs> that's just something you can't have and you can't do, especially when you got the Bulldogs backed up in their own. Well, when you, when you got the Bulldogs with their backs against the wall, against the end zone. Bulldogs more in the bend but don't break type defense coming up. But so far, a has played really, really good defense so far in this game. They held them to, what, 127 yards of total offense in the first half. That's definitely got to be one of the, the lows for the entire season. All right, here we go. Totten trying to fire it up, trying to throw up the 50-50 mm. ball, but it falls incomplete off the hands of his intended wide receiver. Defending for Alabama a and on that one, number 28, Joshua M. Williams. Well, still Titans good coverage right there. Might have gotten away with a minor hold, but Coach Maynard trusted his corner in that one-on-one -on -one situation. We're going to leave you by yourself. We want you to take on his receiver one-on-one, -on -one, get the job done, and he got the job done. That's the purpose of being a cover corner on that one. So here we go, Mississippi Valley now facing a fourth down on the Bulldogs' 28-yard line. They've got two wide receivers to the top, two to the bottom, MDSU. single back. Totten in the backfield, and Bumble. bad snap on the play. Totten still can't pick it up. Eventually he does, but he will be sacked by, guess who? Armani Holloway. Bulldogs will take over on a disastrous play by Mississippi Valley. And all that momentum, and just like that, is gone. So now your defense has to come out here and try to stop this a and offense that has scored on their last few possessions in a row to close out the first half. Titan you got to get that momentum back if you're Valley State. Back on Alabama offense now for Alabama a and &M. It is Armani Akil Glass Holloway. leading the squad out onto the field. For those who are just joining us, Akil Glass is now the Alabama a and all-time leading career touchdown passes. Bulldogs. He surpassed Step Kelsey Luke with his touchdown Glass. pass in the second quarter. Now, Glass stepping back to pass. He fakes. He throws across the middle, and mm. the ball falls incomplete. Knocked away at the last moment by number eight. Well, Charles Shepard was the intended wide receiver. Was knocked away by a Valley defender literally at the last moment. It was a little late on that pass play right there, Reggie. Yeah, a little late. Threw it just behind, but um, you could see him try to adjust to get the ball, but still, you can't really you can't really recover in those in those types of passes. So second down coming up for the Alabama a and Bulldogs. They're near the midfield stripe. Of course, we've been talking about records that have been falling today. We talked about Akil Glasses, all-time career touchdown pass record. Now he has that, but Jordan Bentley also has the single-season scoring record with now 108. And on that play right there, he just adds to his career rushing total with a first down on the play. And it was just simple. Hand it off to Bentley and see what he does. That's right. They're going to probably go back to him one more time with this spread option look, this spread offense look. Yeah, definitely spread offense look there. So here we go. Glass stepping back to play. He's got all kind of time in the world, but he's going to run out of time. He's pressured, and he throws it away. Adul Fatai Ibrahim was the closest wide receiver on that one, so he would not be called for intentional grounding on that play. Valley kind of had really not much of a delayed blitz, but it was more so of their guys getting upfield and eventually getting the pressure on it. And it's a great job. You got to be able to force a kill glass outside of his rhythm because when he's outside of his rhythm, he tends to be pretty hesitant with his throws at times. So got to put pressure on the quarterback if you want to be able to keep them from scoring some more points. Second down and 10 for Alabama A&M. Two receivers to the top. One receiver to the bottom. They've got the tight end more in a slot position. Second and then Bentley's in the backfield with a kill glass. Mississippi Valley. Looks Good. like they're playing two safeties back. They're going to bring... 
Oh, they're going to run with Bentley. They he's will. The Bentley bounces outside. He's at the 35, the 30, the 25, down to about the 24-yard line. Another first down for Jordan Bentley. And if you saw Valley State, they put everybody, everybody to the near side. Nobody was defending the right side of the field. And Jordan Bentley, another big carry for him. And you got to credit uh, Akil Glass for seeing, seeing that play happen. Yeah, that's right. And, you know, good vision once again by the junior quarterback and good chemistry by the quarterback running back duo. That same formation from the last play. They're backing it once again. They hand it off to Bentley. Bentley's at the 20, the 15. He's inside the 15-yard line, Jordan tackled Bentley, around the 14 Bentley. on the play. Jordan Bentley is Stop moving the sticks in this him. on this drive in the second half. They might run a play-action pass play one more time one despite the last pass First being forced down. out of bounds. So let's see what they're going to get from the sidelines. First and ten for Alabama of course, Alabama a &M are running that check with me and offense. Coach Jason Mai does the line. play calling from the sideline, but he gets it from Coach Taylor in the box. And Coach Manor is just like, hey, let's run it or let's not run it. Valley playing single high safety again. And here's the play action fake, and it's intercepted by number one, Tracy Tompkins of Mississippi Valley, he's still on his feet. Eventually, he'll be knocked down around the 30-yard line. Wow. that What a momentum killer. Definitely oh a momentum swing on that one. As I take a look at the, the replay here, I mean, Akil Glass had his man, but you got to give props to Tompkins on that one. He just read that one, stepped in front of it, and took it all the way back. Big momentum swing for Mississippi Valley. But there's someone down the field that's Tavoris Butler, one of the seniors being honored on senior day. But he's going to walk up under his own power. It's a good thing he can. Absolutely. Now, the intended wide receiver on that play was Kendrick Johnson. And if if Glass, throw, if Glass throws it in front of him, he's probably scoring right there. But he kind of did throw the ball a tad bit late. Um, of course, that was a, more of a tight end release on yep. the play. But with those tight end release, you either got to hit it quick or you got to hit it deep. And he didn't do either one on that one. The play results in an interception by Tracy Tompkins. That's the second INT that Akil has thrown today. And this is the, that was the second time on that drive he threw it behind his intended receiver Valley. and not ahead of him. All right, so Mississippi Valley back on the offensive. Titan throws it out. The ball goes off the fingertips of Johnny Wilson on that one. Intended for number 17. So let's see if Valley State can try to capitalize on the Jenkins turnover. Ray. They got to be able to capitalize and get points off of turnovers because they mean nothing if you can't score eventually on your next go. drive. Absolutely. 10:34 to go in the third quarter. Alabama A&M on top, 28 to seven over the Delta Devils of uh, Mississippi Valley. Mississippi Valley, they've got the ball after an interception. Totten in the backfield, hands it off to Johnson. Johnson trying to run over a couple of defenders. And, look, he's got some good yardage on that one there, Reggie. So they'll bring up third and manageable coming up for the Delta Devils. You could see Valley State maybe go for another QB draw up the middle. That big offensive line, it worked one time before for Totten. We'll see if it'll work again. But A&M, they're playing a lot of zone on this drive right now. Third down coming up for Mississippi Valley. This is probably one of the most third down and manageable situations they've had the probably the entire game. Titan will hand it off to Johnson. He's trying to follow some blocks. Being patient, he'll be taken down near the first the down mark. And, yes, he does have enough for the, for the first down, so they're going to move those chains. So Very interesting if they're going to run the ball a lot on Wild this drive. Are they going to set up for a play-action pass possibly? You got to think that's, that's the name of the game there. So Mississippi Valley now coming out with three wide receivers to the top, one single receiver to the bottom, and they'll hand it off once again to Johnson. And Johnson will eat up some more yardage on that Jordan one, eat up some more clock as well. Two-yard gain on, on the play brings up second down. Well, if you're going to run the football, you got to be able to manage the clock. You're already down by three touchdowns, and there's already six minutes taken off the board. If you don't have that much time left in the game, nine minutes can go by really quickly, especially if you're going to go to the ground game as much as you are right now. Second down, we'll call it about eight for the Delta Devils. They're still in that trip set to the top. Single wide receiver to the bottom. Totten steps back to pass, Ooh. and he will be sacked on the play. Give the credit to Richard Calloway on the sack there for Alabama A&M. Coach Granville Eastman finally calling a blitz play, and it works to perfection. Well, with this A&M defense, Valley State's not the only one that can hit the quarterback. A&M, they're third in the conference, and sacks 
in the season, and that's another one added to this A&M defense. Callaway coming through untouched up the middle on a delayed blitz, and he played it off perfectly. Titan didn't know what hit him on that play. Brings up third down and long now for Mississippi down, Valley. Corners playing Valley. back off about 10 yards. Titan steps up in the pocket. Looks like he's going to run it, and he's going to be forced out of bounds well short of the first down. So kudos to the A&M defense for coming up big on third down. But let's see what happens. Will Coach Dancy keep his guys on the field for fourth down? No, looks like they're going to go into the punting situation. Well, that's a rare sight. I mean, with the Valley State, that was last drive. It was the second time that they went for it on fourth and for fourth and long. Didn't get it. So I guess they thought, okay, let's just get the defense back out there. Let's just trust them one more time and try again next time. Fourth down, seven yards to go for NBA So fourth and seven coming up for Mississippi Valley. I do hilarious. Is your punt return on this one? He's got his feet on the 25-yard line. There's a clean kick. It's off. Hilaire backs all the way up to about the 18-yard line. Tries to follow his blocks. He's running past the defenders. Leaps over a man, and he will be tackled around the 31-yard line. That's where Alabama A&M will start off. Mr. First down to 10. Moving from right to left on your Alabama video screen. Well, I, I got to say, Coach Maynard must be pretty proud with how well this team has played Valley. so far because he knows how dangerous Valley Only State can be because they can day. catch you off guard. And this defense and offense have stepped up to the call and have played really well on both sides of the First field. And ten for the Bulldogs. Absolutely. And, of course, Coach Maynard wants to, have, wants to see his team go out four, with a victory, a which will be, for sure, second winning season straight, something we hadn't seen in quite a while here on the Hill. First down play, Akil Glass throws a quick wide receiver screen to a dude for Ty Ibrahim. He gets maybe one on, on the play, but those defensive backs of Mississippi Valley read that perfectly. Good job game tackling by the secondary and by the linebackers as well to be able to stop the way from getting any, any extra yards. Forward progress did give him one yard, so it'll bring up second down and nine for Alabama A&M. Akil Glass still in at quarterback. Bentley back there one more time. He's got a trips tight set to his right side, and they're going to pitch it out to Bentley. Bentley trying to follow those blocks. However, the n number 11, Little William Morgan, slips away carry. from from the wide receiver who was blocking him and comes up with the tackle on that one. Actually, pretty great play call. It's just that the defensive back for Mississippi Valley just made a great play. And I guess you're going to see this defense kind of step it up a bit more, play more stout, try not to give up the big plays. They did a good job last time stopping a from scoring one more time in the red zone. We'll see if they do it one more time and cause another fourth down. Third down coming up Third for Alabama A&M. They've the got Red trips Dog. up the top. They've got single to the bottom. Bentley in the backfield with the kill glass. Looks like Mississippi Valley is going to send five guys up front. So look for that five-on-five -five matchup. They'll actually bring four and mm. miscommunication right there on the play. Akil Glass looks like he wanted to hit – Xavieron Moore, but maybe Xavieron cut inside where Glass wanted him to keep going up the seam. Now that's the third time so far in this half that Akil Glass has threw it behind his receiver. He ran an in route and threw it way too, way too far behind and had to reach back for it. But you got a question. Is Akil Glass losing his poise right now to kick off the second half? I think he really was shaken up a little bit by that interception that happened in the red zone. I mean, luckily, they're still up by 21 points. But you got to think that, you know, that, that touchdown would have gave them a four-touchdown lead. Instead, now Alabama A&M is punting. And a Ooh. great play by Armani Holloway getting the tackle on Donald Johnson, Donald Johnson on the, the third on the Alabama punt team. 28. Holloway not giving him Alabama any time to rush that ball back. And another Armani potential first-team all-swag player in Armani Holloway leading his team in total tackles so far this season. And – that, that's just filthy. That's just disrespectful with the way you tackle somebody. But you got to instill that type of physicality if you want to be able to keep this lead and keep Valley State at bay. And remember, Amani Hollywood was the leading tackler in the entire Southwestern Athletic Conference last year. Mm -hmm. So he, was a he actually was a unanimous preseason pick for this upcoming season. So here's Mississippi Valley back on the offense of the handoff. Goes to Johnson, and he goes nowhere on the play. Forward progress may have given him a half yard, but it'll still be second down and long coming up. And Valley State, they're going to – they brought out a – they brought out a new quarterback. I don't – that's not the Jared Bryan. That's not Titan either. No, it's not. That is Chandler 
Robinson in at quarterback now for Mississippi Valley. The third quarterback used by Mississippi Valley is throwing out all the shots, and on his second play on the offensive, there's a penalty. Again, uncharacteristic. You got to bring down those penalties. For someone who does not commit that many penalties, you don't want to do this, especially if you're trying to come back, and you're running a three-quarterback system as well. You really have to be perfect in every aspect of the game to make this comeback possible now. Correct. So, false start on Mississippi Valley. That'll push them back and bring up second down and long. Don't really have too many stats on Mr. Robinson this year. So, maybe Coach Dancy probably yeah, uses this guy seldomly. Yeah. And, yeah. Pending, you know, depending on how much time he actually has, it's just maybe, out. you know, just time just kind of show what he's worth. But on that one play right there, Alabama A&M. Gets the best of him, and he is sacked by a host of Bulldogs, led by number 92, Breon Austin. Breon Austin. Great pass rush. But again, you got to get the new quarterback a bit flustered, make him nervous, make him feel your presence. And that leads to another big play for the defense. Third down, and we'll call this about 17. Third down, yeah, just about. Yards to go. About 17. So Bulldogs looks like they're going to send about five, well, four guys on the rush with against Mississippi Valley's trips to the top and single to the wide receiver. Robinson throws it across the field, and he is off the mark. The intended wide receiver on the play would have been number 13, Verade White, but then at the same time, that ball was so overthrown. I'm not exactly sure he was even been able to jump at it at the highest point and actually make that catch. He might have been throwing it back to Mississippi at that point. Possibly. <laughs> Possibly, Damn. man, possibly. So Mississippi Valley is forced to punt. Adu Hilaire coming back for Alabama A&M for the return. He's standing around the 49-yard line. First down, 19 yards to well, go this Valley State Valley. defense, once they get back on the field, they have nine interceptions so far this season. But Kill Glass has been a bit shaky, so they might put some more pressure on him with the remainder of this quarter. Speaking of pressure, a &M does bring a little pressure on the punt, and Hilaire oh, will no. fumble it. Looks like there's a muff on it, and Mississippi Valley comes up with the recovery of the muff. Looks like that's number 24, Isaiah Latham, coming through Hilaire with Hilaire the, the recovery of the muff ball. punt. That's, the, that's, that's just bad. Odu Hilaire, I get it, you're a freshman, but you got to bring that in. You got to secure those so punts when it matters Valley, the most. And Isaiah now you Latham. give Valley State some momentum to work with here with 430 to go in the third quarter. Correct. And look, I know it is still slick outside on the field. It's been misting most of the day. The wind has died down a little bit, but it stormed last night here in the Huntsville area. So, yeah, you got to be extra careful with the way you're trying to catch these balls, field these punts. And unfortunately, Hilaire did not do so on that play. So, Robinson getting another chance, and he's going to try to go deep down the field and mm. tries to go for the 50-50 ball. Intended wide receiver on that one was number 17, Johnny Wilson. Almost intercepted by um, Wilson, Tuau Wilson for A&M. Yeah, that is crazy. Wilson on Wilson <laughs> on that play. <laughs> but good one-on-one -on -one coverage by the corner. MDSU. Great job to stop a potential big play. Second down now coming up for Mississippi Valley. I'm going to be honest with you. The weather's been just crazy in the Tennessee Valley the last couple of days. It's It's been rough. Man, a couple of days. Try a couple <laughs> of weeks. <laughs> it's been rough. A couple of weeks. I mean, you think about it. Um, if we go, all, go all the way back to mid-October, we were still facing 90-degree temperature in mid-October. Then we had the cool front come through. Then all of a sudden, it was cool going into that last week of October. Then the Max City Classic downpour. That's probably one of the games – when it comes to like heavy rain like that literally i've never been a part of something like that in a long long time and it was pouring down raining there and then it warmed up the next game we had with jackson state that was here at home of course it warmed up through the day but then once the sun went behind those clouds it got really cold and then it's got warmer again yeah, it's kind of been just back and forth like fall wants to keep its appearance but winter's like look at some point, it's our turn. So, yeah, it has been crazy. And even last night, if you were in the eastern part of the Huntsville area, you had to deal with fog. If you were in the western point of Huntsville going towards Muscle Shoals and Decatur and all that, you were dealing with heavy rain that eventually came through the Huntsville area late last night. So, yeah, it's been crazy weather-wise. And today it's just very cloudy, still a little misting going on. So a lot of things happening. 
Speaking of happening, Robinson, he is pressured, and he will be sacked by Amani Holloway on that one. He just took way too much time on the play, and Holloway just happened to be right place, right time, and sacks him on the play. Well, a and once again playing some good defense, and you force a <coughs> – excuse me. You force a fourth and long, and again, another great stop by Connell Maynard's defensive unit. And they might – Maybe this defensive performance would carry over into the offseason and maybe into next season because this year this defense has not been great at all. It, it has not been good at all. Now, of course, you know, with Mississippi Valley, they're coming on the punt right now. It looks like they're going to bring an extra guy up front for the protection because Alabama A&M has basically got everybody at the front, and they do come forward. However, the punt is off. Hadou Alaire this time will fair catch it, and he makes the catch right there near the 23-yard line. So Alabama A&M will bring their offense back onto the field with another opportunity to try to put some more points on the board. 3.05 to go. In the third quarter, Alabama A&M winning 28-7 against Mississippi Valley. Of course, this is the season finale and the SWAC finale mm -hmm. for both of these schools. That's right. Mississippi Valley coming into today's game 2-9 uh, and nine on the season, 1-5 and five in the SWAC. Alabama A&M coming in 6-5, and 3-3 three and three in the SWAC. Well, A&M, they're trying to capitalize and improve from 6-5 and five to 7-5 and five this season, and they're in prime position to make that happen. All right, pitch out goes to Gary Qualls. Qualls cuts it back, and the young man from Birmingham will have enough for a first down. Let's move those chains down the field, moving from right to left on your video screen. And that's another Bulldog first down by Gary Qualls. Now, you call him lightning in a bottle, and he does have a lot of speed behind him. Absolutely, and Coach, when I talked to Coach last year, Going into Qualls' his freshman year, he said that he has the opportunity to be special. They just had to find ways to get him the ball. And they're going to get – oh, never mind. Here comes, him comes like a little quick pitch reverse. It goes to do for Ty Raheem. However, on the play right there, Mississippi Valley's defensive back, number six, Keontae Daniel, was not fooled on that one. Now, do you think this is just a one-game thing with the use of the option? Are they going to try to implement this, implement this some more going into next season? To be honest with you, I bet you this was always in the playbook. They were just looking for somebody to actually use it against. Fair enough. I'm and the reason why I say that is just because of the offensive minds that you have on this Alabama and him offensive staff. So I really think it was in the playbook, but they just were looking for prime opportunities to actually use it against certain defenses. Because, I mean, certain defenses um, reflect to the option and other option-type orientses in most cases. On the play right here, Gary Quarles goes up the middle, picks up a few yards on the play. They'll bring up about third down and four on the play. Quarles basically ran into the back of his offensive lineman. Had he cut left or cut right, he would probably would have been gaining more yards. But running into the offensive lineman literally gave him a half second to get around, and Mississippi Valley was right there to take him down. Well, it looks like Jordan Bentley has not been in a single play so far on this drive as Quarles stays in the game. He has not in on this play, a duel for Ty Raheem tries to get the wide receiver pitch, and Mississippi Valley snuffs that one out quickly. Alabama A&M put in a punting situation now. Well, good start by Valley State, so the defense is holding strong, but now your offense needs to respond, and they got to respond fast as we're closing in on the fourth quarter as we speak. Scores from around the swag, of course, right now it's 28-7 to as we wind down the, the third quarter here in Huntsville. Other scores in Jackson, Mississippi, all corn, all over Jackson State. It's now 17 to nothing. Braves as Alabama A&M gets the punt off. Looks like there was some contact on the play, but referee, the head referee is saying that the ball was tipped, so there will be no roughing or running into the punter on this one. Going back to what we were saying on the SWAC scores, Alcorn State now leads Jackson State 17 to nothing at Jackson Memorial Stadium, and it's only the beginning of the second quarter. With a victory, Alcorn State will host the SWAC championship in two weeks. If Alcorn State somehow loses this game, then the winner of the Southern Grambling State Bayou Classic will be the host in the SWAC championship in a couple of weeks. And once again, the West coming down to the Bayou Classic to determine who goes to the SWAC championship game. So many times it has come down to that, especially in the last five years. Coach Broderick Fives and Coach Dawson Odoms, I mean, hey, you know, they like each other probably 
350 days a week. But when it comes to that week of the Bayou Classic, nah, it's a whole different story as well. But, yeah, they've definitely put together a nice budding rivalry between the uh, – not not only between themselves, but, of course, the schools have two long story rivalries. And, look, that will be the last play of the third quarter. So we will enter the fourth quarter here in Huntsville in just a few moments with your score, Alabama a up 28 and Mississippi Valley's Delta Devils 7. You're watching Swag Football here on the Bulldog Sports Network. Welcome back to Swag Football on the Bulldog Sports Network. Mo Cord and Reggie Reese getting you ready for the fourth quarter was just started here in Huntsville between Alabama A&M and Mississippi Valley State. So, Reggie, as we go into the fourth quarter, of course, Valley now working with their third quarterback on the day, and Chandler Robinson still kind of really hasn't found his arc, or really hasn't found his groove as well with Mississippi Valley. Well, it's pretty interesting because you go from, you know, Bryant – to Totten, to Johnson. So we'll see what he can do. He's throwing the ball really high. I have noticed that. He is very prone to, th to overthrowing the football. But that high pass was caught by Johnny Wilson, and that'll move the sticks for Mississippi Valley. First down. First down. A&M so far still playing some good defense, but – Valley State, you got to finish drives now. For the last few drives, it's ended in fourth. It's ended in a fourth. And um, a fourth and st a stop on fourth down and a turnover. No points have been scored here in the second half, as a matter of fact. Almost intercepted just now. Absolutely, as the pressure was on Robinson on that one. Oh, boy. But, again, despite, des despite the fact that Valley State is a big defensive team, you want to get momentum in any way, shape, or form that you can. So to play like this at the end of the season to close out the year for A&M's defense – has got to be a really huge confidence boost for the younger players. Absolutely. And you got to think, too, with Alabama a ms defense, this is the third defensive scheme in three years that they've had to learn. So with that being said, that's kind of tough on a lot of these players as Robinson rolls out and he'll complete the pass to Christian Sutton, but he only picks up about three yards at max on that play. But going back to Alabama a ms defense, yes, third scheme in three years. They had Travis Pierce's scheme, then they had Coach DeBassiani's scheme, now they're under Coach Granville Eastman's scheme. Of course, those three schemes have been three completely different schemes. So you got to think about how personnel tries to attract to that 
and how that affects recruiting as Robinson rolls out. He's got a little time. Looks like he's going to call his own number. Slips a tackle. He's down to the 20-yard line, and that's what will be stopped by a host of Bulldog defenders on that one. Kind of looks like Robinson really didn't know what he wanted to do on that one because he really wanted to throw it, and then nothing was open, and he was like, I don't really want to pass it because it looked like he was going to hold up for a second, yeah. and then he eventually just ran it. You just got to do whatever you can to – get down the field and score. They're just doing whatever they can to get down the field and get some points because that's what you ultimately want. He's doing whatever he can to put his body on the line in order to get those points on the scoreboard and kind of shrink the gap. Robinson will hand it off to Johnson right up the middle. Johnson picks up about two yards before he's knocked back by a host of Bulldogs on the play. Brings up second down. Good stop by A&M on defense. Trying to slow down the momentum that Valley State has built. They might go for a pass, or they might they might go for a pass right here since Caleb Johnson's been pretty effective so far in the third quarter. You, you kind of just got to go with what the defense gives you. Yeah, you do. A&M, they're going to show four down linemen right here. Second down coming up for Mississippi Valley. There's the snap. Robinson tries to go across the field. Intended wide receiver on the play was Johnny Wilson, and the play falls incomplete. He want the, the QB wants a flag from he, the ref. He did, but the side judge who was over there says, no, just great defense on that one. Well, a &M has played some pretty good defense, but on this drive, they have given up some yards, and let's see if Valley State in the red zone. Once again, can you close down, can you close the deal and just get some points? Four down territory, definitely for Mississippi Valley, who's down by three scores, 28 to 7, 12 36 to go in the entire game here in Huntsville, Alabama, between the Delta Devils and the Bulldogs. There's a snap. Robinson throws it in the flats. He's got it complete to number 86. That's Malik Myers. Myers will not have enough for a first down. Brings a fourth and about maybe two, we'll call it. But we got a flag down from the far side. Possibly in the areas of holding. Still waiting on the call. Let's see. Still waiting. Still waiting. Ball start on the defense. Offsides on the defense. They'll replay third down. So basically that was a free play for Mississippi Valley. Well, there you go. You got the free play in. You inch a little bit closer. I think they might go for just a simple run up the middle with the big offensive line you got right there. Don't try to do anything a bit too too extravagant. So here we go, third down now. Mississippi Valley knocking on the door inside the 15-yard line of Alabama A&M. Handoff goes to Johnson. He tries to find some running room, and he will not get any there. He is taken down by a host of Bulldogs and will credit number 57, Marcus Cushion, the guy who had the fumble return against Jackson State that really changed the game in the course of that game. A couple of weeks ago, he comes up with the tackle, forcing fourth down for Mississippi Valley. Well, everybody wants to eat on this A&M defense, and it's the week before Thanksgiving, so they got some pretty hungry players down there on the field. Absolutely, man. You know, Thanksgiving's always a good time. I always say that Thanksgiving, two greatest things that come out of it is turkey and football. That's right. Fourth down coming up for Mississippi Valley. New quarterback back into it, and guess who that is? The starting quarterback, Jerick Bryant, called in for – a practical rushing attempt, and depending on the spot, he may have a first down. And it looks like they're giving him the first down, and they will move the sticks. They will move the sticks. That is a Valley State first down. All right, so we've just been informed that Alabama a and Armani Holloway now has the single-season tackle record with 113 he bypasses Johnny Baldwin who set that record all the way back in 2006 along with Jamal Ware in 2002 I mean he's been pretty much the best player on this defense all season long and he was one of the best players on the defense last year as well and a lot of people wondering how he was going to play with the loss of Yurik Bethune but it looks like he has kind of stayed in the same same range and same motion that he was doing last year there's a timeout on the field. We'll take it with them with 11-18 to go in the fourth quarter. Bulldogs lead the Delta Devils 28-7. You're watching Swag Football on the Bulldogs Sports Network.
Welcome back to Swag Football on the Bulldog Sports Network. Mo Carter and Reggie Reese here in Huntsville for Alabama A&M and Mississippi Valley. The Delta Devils just ran the play. It got about a yard on the, the play itself. They'll bring up second down as they're trying to knock on the door and get into the end zone against this Bulldogs defense. Valley State, they've been driving down the field very effectively. They're, cr they're closing in a bit on that touchdown. We'll see if they can get it. One-on-one -on -one ball right here and overthrow him. Overthrow him pass. And it looks like who's back in the court? Bryant's back in that quarterback. Like, good God, they played they played three quarterbacks on this on this drive in general. I wonder how Valley State fans feel about you know the three quarterback system and if they think it's pretty effective. That is a good question. I'm looking at some of the comments on looking at some of the comments on the stream off the YouTube page. Someone says that Robinson won a bunch of state titles in the state of Mississippi. So, mm. guy, you know. He's got some hardware. He's a winner. Right. So here's Brian rolling out, looking for a man, and That's he's got right. a man in the back of the end zone for a touchdown. That is Christian Sutton. So credit Bryant, the Jerry Bryant to Christian Sutton for the touchdown for Mississippi Valley, and now we're down to a two-score game, 28-13. to 13. And would you look at that off in the distance, a beautiful rainbow shining as we speak. Absolutely. Wow. That rainbow is something I'm going to take a picture of right now and post it on my Twitter in just a short moment. Wow. That is beautiful. Very wow. beautiful rainbow there. And the extra point is blocked by Alabama A&M, and it is scooped up by a Bulldog player. That's Mike Mills. The Mills trying to – Exactly. He's got blocks in front of him. He's at the 40, the 45, the 50. One man to beat. 30, 25, 15, 10, 5. Two points for the return. Touchdown, Bulldogs. Look at the speed. Mike Mills with the two-point conversion return. I haven't seen one of those in a long time, but – Kudos to Mills and the entire defensive front for getting their hands up and then following the blocks and getting down the field. My goodness. And the way that he stopped, waited for the blocks to set up and then go again. Wow. That that's that's patience. That's really good patience in the heat of the moment. Absolutely. So Alabama AM swinging the momentum once again. They're now on top 30 to 13 after the Delta Devils had scored on the Previous touchdown, but Alabama A&M returns it, the two-pointer. I'll say I'll, I'll give him 90 yards on that one. I can't remember exactly where he actually picked the ball up from. But, hey, he's got two points on the day. And Mike Mills, another one of those seniors who's going out in style. That's right. And what better way to go out than not only with a great touchdown or with a great block field goal leading the points, but a potential A&M win on the horizon as the rainbow continues to shine brightly over the campus of Alabama A&M University. Absolutely. As a matter of fact, if you go to my Twitter in about a minute, so at Mo Carter WZDX, I will post a picture of that beautiful rainbow that is shining right over the horizon near Lewis Cruz Stadium. And that rainbow, that must mean a sign of good times as Coach Maynard must love the way his special teams came up with the great, great block to shut down some to shut down any chance of Valley State making it a two touchdown game. Absolutely. So your new score, Alabama AM thirty, Mississippi Valley thirteen, ten thirty eight to go in the fourth quarter. Alabama AM lining up for what appears to be an onside kick and what in the world just happened here? Okay, so Mississippi Valley just took off and then they stopped, but he had a bunch of players go across what would be the line of scrimmage where the ball is and no penalty was called. I like how they all just stopped at the same time. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so Quarles and Adu Hilaire are back deep, and Quarles will take the kick. He's trying to find some blockers. He gets upfield. He shakes a couple of defenders, and they'll be tackled near the 35-yard line. Crazy sequence there. And Reggie, as a, as a matter of fact, we've got another beautiful rainbow over the actual stadium this time. Wow, like this is just a great sight. In the midst of all this rain, you're going to always have light that's going to eventually shine down on you. Absolutely. So, <laughs> as as promised, everyone, if you go to my Twitter, if you go to my Twitter, at Mo Carter WZDX, you will see the pair of rainbows in less than 30 seconds. I'm posting both of these 
photos of these great rainbows. Don't get a chance to actually, you know, see those at this time of the year, especially. <laughs> That's true. Especially at this time of the year. And they're going to put Bentley back in. He's going to get some more yards to add to his career rushing total. But real quick, real quick, you know, for Valley State, I just want to, I just want, you know, to give them kudos. They opened up in 1950. They're closing in on 70 years of being a school in Itabena, Mississippi. So congratulations to them. And A&M, they've been around for almost 150 years as a school. So congratulations to my alma mater and big very, very proud of my alma mater in my school. Absolutely. You know, these great institutions that are HBCUs within the Southwestern Athletic Conference, they have made a great contributions, not only among the schools as well, the endowments, of course, great athletic programs as well. And just all of us connected as HBCUs, putting together great academics and athletics at the same time, producing wonderful student athletes, great faculty, and wonderful presidents that have come in, presidents that have come in and represented our institutions in, on a great, great um, basis. All right, everyone. Alabama A&M with trips to the bottom, a single to the top. And Keel Glass tries to go across the middle to a do for Ty Ibrahim. However, he overthrows him on the pass, nearly intercepted there. One thing I don't like about this weather, it just makes you a tad bit congested at times. <laughs> it's been a struggle as of late for me this week, so I'm trying to pull through it as much as I can. I totally understand. Don't worry, man. We only got 9.16 to go in the fourth <laughs> quarter. After that, we can send you home and get some tea or some orange juice or whatever it is that you'll need to kind of get yourself clear as you get ready for this Thanksgiving week. I'm an orange juice type of person, but I will drink some tea here and there. Awesome, awesome, man. All right, 9.16 to go. The, the sky is starting to open up here over Lewis Cruz Stadium as Alabama A&M has a second down going against Mississippi Valley. A kill glass throws it a two for Ty Ibrahim. He shakes the defender. He's at the 40-yard line, near the 35-yard line. That'll be another first down for Alabama A&M. And the man-to-man -man coverage didn't work. Great job to break, away, to get, to break the tackle and get a first down. Hey, we've, and we've seen him break tackles and actually take it to the house. So That's right. I actually thought he might actually get out there and actually do that one as well. All right, everyone, for anyone who was just listening to us, we were talking about the two wonderful rainbows over Lewis Cruz Stadium. If you go to my Twitter, at Mo Carter WZDX, you'll see a picture of both of those Twitters. I mean, both of those rainbows on the Twitter as play continues right here for A&M. And Akil Glass is sacked on the play. The pocket just broke down, and a big number 90 for Mississippi Valley. Romalis Carey coming through with the big sack. And that's his third sack on the season at that but is also one of the leaders in quarterback hits on this Valley State defense as well, though. So it brings up second down and long for Alabama a and Really, the Bulldogs trying to get into a groove here in the second half, which they really have not been able to do. I mean, they got down all the way inside the 10-yard line before that interception was thrown by Keel Glass. They've kind of been off since. And Valley State, they've done a really good job of trying to shut down this A&M offense. As Gary Qualls picks up about nine yards on the play. Actually, they'll give him about 12 on that play there. So Alabama a and finally getting some offensive grooves moving with their rushing attack. Of course, we know that Jordan Bentley has been the main guy, but Qualls has some moves as well. So look for him in the future to continue to make plays. Coach Manners always said, we just got to find a way to get him the ball. And with him being more of a scat back, um, you never know what will come out of him on that one. So third down coming up for Alabama a and They've got two wide receivers to the near side, one wide receiver to the top. The tight end's in the slot position. Qualls in the backfield with Akil Glass. Looking to the sidelines, Coach Jason Myers like, run this play right now. We are going to get it ran. And here's the snap, the handoff, actually fake to Qualls, and it goes across Beautiful. the middle to Zabrion Moore. He shares a tackle before he's being knocked down inside the five-yard line. Pinpoint accuracy. From a kill glass, he does a really good job at getting those slant routes to work, especially in one-on-one -on -one situations, because he has the receivers to do it. And a kill glass, another great pass for another first down. Alabama A&M knocking on the door. We've reached the seven-minute mark now in the game. They've got a 30 or 13 lead and trying to add more. As here comes that heavy set once again that we were talking about earlier, Reggie. Here we go again to Bentley, and, he's and Bentley is met in the backfield by a host of 
Mississippi Valley defenders led by number 58 to Darius Davis. Davis was like, I know Bentley's getting this ball, and I'm going straight for Bentley, and it paid off for the Valley defense. And Davis is now hovering around 80 tackles on the season, and that's a that's one of the ways to get there is by shutting down maybe the best running back in the swag. No doubt, no doubt on that one. Because, I mean, you know, when you bring that heavy set in, you know more than likely you're going to Jordan Bentley in that situation. I mean, it's – Unless you're the Seahawks. Oh, yeah, unless you're the Seahawks. <laughs> unless you are the Seahawks. Beast Mode's probably like, bro, really? <laughs> <laughs> really, bro? <laughs> <laughs> I would love to have been like a fly on the wall when, like, Pete Carroll actually had to talk to Beast Mode about that. I would have loved to have been a fly on the wall. So here we go. Second down for Mississippi, I mean, excuse me, for Alabama A&M. Kill Glass is flushed out of the pocket, and he just has to throw the ball away so they'll bring up third down on that one. Valley coming with only three guys up front, but they did get a lot of pressure. Kudos to the Delta Devils for, be, for being able to stand up to this A&M offense in the red zone to prevent a touchdown, forcing a thir another third down um, against the Bulldogs. So here we go, third down. Looks like Coach Manor had to kind of bring back out the spread set once again. Keep an eye, though, on the tight end in this package right here. That is number 87, Anthony Howard. And there's a fumble on the play. Jordan Bentley actually fumbles the ball. You rarely ever see that, and it is scooped up by mm. number 58. Once again, to Darius Davis. So Alabama A&M comes up with no points inside the red zone and – a costly play actually by Jordan Bentley, which you do not see at all. You never, ever see that out of Bentley. Very occasion. And in the red zone out of all places where you have the chance to give points to increase your lead, but now Valley State has a chance to come back on offense and get another touchdown to make it possibly a 10-point game with five and a half minutes to go. Possibly. Now Coach Manor, he's talking things over with a couple of these referees. And there's the band on your screen, the marching maroon and white, sending us a wave over here on the screen. Some of them led by Mr. Wright. I think Coach Manor was trying to talk to the referees, maybe saying that it possibly could have been like a swing pass or something, but I guess the refs are buying it. So Mississippi Valley will take over first down and 10 on their own 11-yard line. And back at quarterback is the Jarek Bryant. Bryant will hand it off to Johnson, and Johnson is met in the backfield by a pair of Bulldogs led by the one, the only, Armani Holloway. And that's a grown man tackle. Like they might want to try to force a safety against this Valley State offense if they can with all the pressure that they're able to get on the last couple possessions. We're reaching the five-minute mark here in Huntsville, Alabama. Alabama A&M on top of Mississippi Valley, 30 to 13. Flag. Tons of flags on this play. <laughs> so let's see what happens on that one. I can tell you that John Derrick Smith did get the ball and tried to rush up the, around the right side. I didn't catch what the penalty was, but whatever it is, it is half the distance to the goal line, and they'll replay second down. So an offensive mistake by Mississippi Valley deep inside their own territory. Well, now you don't want to be in this position. You have less than five minutes to go, but there's an A&M player down. That's number 54 for A&M, Maurice Smith. I think he was holding his quad just now. And now they're saying up. the previous play will be under further review. Maybe another targeting situation? Possibly. But I don't see the referee actually moving over to the DV sports area. So, don't know what's going on there. But, look, there's an injury timeout on the field. We'll take it with them with 4.56 to play in the game. Alabama A&M leads 30-13 to over Mississippi Valley. You're watching Swag Football on the Bulldog Sports Network.
Welcome back to Swag Football on the Bulldog Sports Network. Mo Carter and Reggie Reese in the, the broadcast booth for Alabama A&M and Mississippi Valley on third down. It was the Jarek Bryant's pass that fell incomplete, so it'll bring a fourth down in a punting situation for Mississippi Valley. I think really at this time, Valley's kind of just trying everything they can and trying to just really get a feel of, okay, can you play, can you play, can you play, and then we're going to evaluate that. Yeah. I mean, with the season that you have this year, you know what the strength of your team is going to be next year. I promise you this next season, I would not want to play a Valley State's defense whatsoever because say what you want about 30 to, thir to 13, they have shown they will hit you and hit you hard and force you to do things you don't want to do. Another muff punt by Colby White. However, Alabama A&M is able to jump on that recovery there, so they'll take over near midfield. I'm pretty sure who's in sh whoever's in charge of uh, special teams will not like no. <laughs> not like what they see on the tape when they look at things tomorrow and meet with the team. No, but I also think they're kind of focused on Thanksgiving week, you know, and just – Eh, well, of course, yeah. You're gonna, be, you're gonna, you're gonna, no. You, here's the thing. <laughs> you're gonna be focused on Thanksgiving week, which is totally fine. But at the same time, you still have to review the tapes and figure out what went wrong and how you can fix them. And even though there's no game next week, that's still stuff that the underclassmen can work on moving forward. All right, new quarterback in the game for Alabama A and M. You don't say that too often. Tyrone Bell mm. in. He'll hand it off to. To Gary Qualls on that one. Qualls will pick up about a yard on the play. Tell us a little bit about Bell, Reggie. I know he's seen limited action this year, but he has seen action. Well, Tyrone Bell, he's a young kid coming in. I think he's going to give him some playing time to see, okay, I know that Akil Glass is going to come back next season, but I want to see what you can do late in this game to potentially take over the reins of Akil Glass maybe in two years. So it's going to be an interesting test for this young quarterback to impress Coach Manor. Bell still in the backfield. He'll roll with the play action, and he runs out of time, and he will be sacked on the play. Ray Taylor coming up with the sack for Mississippi Valley. They just read that perfectly. I mean, whether he would have handed it off to Gary Qualls or he would have took off and tried to run it like he just did, it looks like that play was just going to be broken down from the beginning. Well, real quick. What's your favorite Thanksgiving food? My favorite Thanksgiving food, I'm a big ham guy. Mm. I'm a big ham guy, and I also love, you know, cornbread dressing. Gotcha. I know people say stuffing. I'm sorry. <laughs> On the box it says dressing, so I'm going with dressing. Oh, I got you. I got you. I'm a dressing person myself. Our grandmother makes some really, really good dressing. What a catch. All right. Bell's pass is tipped, but it is caught by a dude for Ty Ibrahim. That's the type of plays that that guy just makes all year long. Bell got kind of saved a little bit. He really did. But <laughs> a completed pass is a completed pass. That's why you work on the tip drills during, during practice for situations like that, both the defensive backs and the wide receivers. In that case, the wide receivers come out better on top with that. And there was a new running back in for Cross. That was number 27, Kennedy Obior, who is a senior. He's going to get some playing time as well. Absolutely. So we've got a timeout on the field, 2.49 to go. Alabama A&M on top of the Mississippi State – excuse me, Mississippi Valley State. Valley. Yeah, I don't want I don't want to confuse anybody for anybody that's actually listening. They're on top of Mississippi Valley State, 30-13 to 13 with 2.49 to go here in Huntsville. Season finale for both. For both schools, um, barring some miracle, Alabama A&M will improve to 7-5 and five on the year and wrap things up 4-3 and three in the SWAC, while Mississippi Valley will fall to 2-10 and ten on the year, 1-6 in, in the SWAC. And, of course, A&M yep. has so many close games that the what-if scenarios are crazy from top to bottom. But at the end of the year, you got to think, because they have their second straight winning season, mm -hmm. Coach Manor is moving this team in the right direction. And another thing you think about, too, as – Bell running the option. He slips past a couple of defenders, and he'll pick up enough for a first down on fourth down, as a matter of fact. But going back to Coach Maynard, you got to think that they're probably going to hang their hat on this season. One, because he said this team was already a year ahead of schedule. That's right. And literally, they were a game away from winning the East title. And the teams that are be in the mix for the SWAC championship, they were in those games as well. So you got to think with all these talented individuals on offense coming back minus Jordan Bentley but you have a teal glass that they they may get 
you know, the Volts to be the preseason favorite in the East. Of course, I know it's always hard to go against Alcorn, but I know they're already they're mi- they're going to lose like twenty something seniors um, after this year. So yeah. we, we'll we'll see what happens with that. But you know, you got to hang your hat to Alabama and them this year for basically, you know, going in the trenches in general. The what if scenarios are like totally crazy, but at the same time. Well, it's been a while for this program and the fans, the students, the alumni to see this football team be put in a position not to just win games, but to possibly win a championship, to possibly contend for a championship. It's been a minute, and Kyle Manor, he's won everywhere he's been, and he proved it right here again at a and I'm going to win here, and he's done exactly that. And I got to say, a and could be the most dangerous team to watch out for going into next season. But Jackson State, they scare me too from the Jackson Spikes. State has a lot of talent across the board, especially with Bowie out there at wide receiver and Jones right there at the um at the quarterback. I mean, we saw that guy. We saw that that guy can play. Well, those guys oh, yeah. can play. I mean, they hooked up a couple of times against the Bulldogs. But of course, you know, this is all stuff that'll happen in Wait. what. Nine more months. Yeah, Yeah, nine, ten more months. So we'll just have to see with that as Bell calls his own own number, picks up another first down for Alabama A&M. So they're moving those chains and moving those sticks. 109 to go, everybody, in uh, the entire season for both Mississippi Valley and Alabama A&M. 30 to 13 Bulldogs on top. Here we go. Tyrone Bell still in that quarterback. He hands it off. And that's Harold Jimison Jr. One of the guys they talked about that could be a future great rusher of Alabama A&M. He kind of has the same build as Jordan Bentley, but, of course, it still takes a little time to yep. be be that type of person. So 52 seconds now to go, everybody. Alabama A&M running a little tempo now. Bell hands it off once again to Jimison, and Jimison is stuffed right up the middle. Kind of interesting that, you know, you have a guy whose last name is Jemison in the city of Huntsville where there's May Jemison High School. Yep. And, of course, where May Jemison, the famous black astronaut, did a lot of work with NASA. Mm-hmm. You know, you just see all these different wrinkles and how all those things go. 30 seconds to go in the game. Let's see if Alabama A&M is going to run another play. And the playcock runs out. Looks like Coach Manor is already walking to the center field to meet up with Coach Dancy. And basically – That'll do it. That will basically do this. So your final score here in Huntsville, Alabama, the Alabama A&M Bulldogs 30, the Mississippi State Delta Devils 13. Valley State. Valley State. I am so sorry. Mississippi Valley State Delta Devils 13. Valley people, don't come after me, everybody. I I know exactly (laughs) who MVSU is. I definitely do know that. Actually, there's a lot of alums here from Valley in the Huntsville area. I go to church with several of them. Really? Yeah, they love they love their Valley State Delta Devils. As a matter of fact, um, Dedrick Smart, who actually played football for Coach Willie Totten with uh, the Mississippi State Mississippi Valley State Delta Devils in the mid two thousands, he's a he's a church member of mine along with his wife Shay. They both graduated from Mississippi Valley. Really? Yeah, man. And and it, I'm saying it's and also here's another thing: Archie Tucker, one of the VPs here at Alabama A and M, he is a Mississippi Valley guy. Really? He is. He is. So, everyone, your final score is Alabama A&M 30, Mississippi Valley State 13. A&M will improve to 75 on the year. Mississippi Valley falls to 3-9 and nine on the season to wrap things up here in 2019. Uh, we'll stay here with the broadcast. Reggie, give me your thoughts on what you saw today. Great momentum builder for next season. Valley State, for them, fans, you have to love this defense despite the score, but for A&M, it's a great way to close out the year with a win and the way to do it through defense, through offense, just consistency across all all facets of the game. And Coach Manor is really, really proud of this team. And I know for a fact he's going to have this team motivated to not just be in contention, but to get the job done and go back to the SWAC championship game where these Bulldogs belong. Alabama A&M has not been to the SWAC championship game since 2011, 2012, one of those two years. So it has been a while, so we shall see. Another thing, too, it was senior day. We saw a guy like Jordan Bentley in his fantastic career with a standout performance today on the ground. I'm trying to get my stats going 
with Bentley. I'll be able to give you final stats on Bentley in just a second. But what did you think about Bentley's last go going today, especially with him setting a single season scoring record? What a way to go out. You you have now seven records to your name. Again, possibly the greatest running back in the history of this school and one of the three or five greatest players we've ever seen come through this campus, even, especially at a time we had a lot of coaching changes going on. For him to still be consistent, even through injury, he's he's been just otherworldly. And he is also my classmate as well in the class of 2020, so it feels pretty good to have that as well. Awesome. As you look on the screen right now, you see Coach Connell Manor being interviewed by several of the local media affiliates, and he's even giving us a shout-out right there, <laughs> as you see. So Coach Manor definitely happy with the results of what happened today. Final stats for Jordan Bentley, 110 net yards on 21 rushing attempts, which is averages about 5.2 yards. Of course, he had that great touchdown on the day. Other final stats to tell you about Akil Glass. 272 pass yards, three touchdowns. He did have two interceptions, but those three touchdowns, especially the two in the second quarter, probably made the difference in this game, especially um, as far as dragging the momentum going into halftime. And momentum was everything for both teams, and you could see in the second half, e &M came out out the gates firing, but the early interception kind of hurt them a little bit, and it gave Valley State a chance to come back into this game. But A&M's defense held strong. Despite Valley State driving downfield multiple times over, they've been able to hold strong and force plenty of turnovers. And Coach Maynard sitting down with the team right there, talking to his teammates for the final time this season after a game. Just got to feel pretty proud about that performance. Absolutely. Taking a look at Mississippi Valley's overall stat, 209 total yards on the entire day. So hats off to the Alabama A&M defense for actually getting a legit showing. Actually, today, when you really think about it, I mean, I know they've they've had their struggles through the years, but you, you got to hang your hat on just only giving up 209 yards on the entire day, mm -hmm. while the Alabama a &M offense put up 428. Wow, that, my goodness. I, this offense is going to be something to be afraid of next season. So, but the biggest question coming into the offseason now, who's going to take over for Jordan Bentley? Yeah, who's going to take over for Jordan Bentley? You don't replace a guy like Jordan Bentley. You try to develop someone to take the reins and eventually work them into a role of what Jordan Bentley had. I mean, he was a bell cow for this program the past four years, came in under Coach James Spady, and then he yeah. flourished under Coach Connell Maynard. And you got to think that this young man is off to great things. Um, we did talk to him earlier this week at the press conference. He's still 50-50 on what he wants to do future-wise. Um, okay. Because, honestly, I think he can get a senior bowl invite. I, I think he has the tools to get a senior bowl invite. Now, whether he wants it or not, I think, is a big question because, of course, he's about to graduate in civil engineering. And, hey, we're in Huntsville. You know, if you if you got an engineering degree and you're smart, you're probably going to get a job. So we don't know if he wants to start that part of his life. yet or if he wants to actually roll with football. Whatever it is, we know that up to this point, he has put blood, sweat, and tears into a program that has turned around, especially through his latter part of his year. And you're talking about a guy who was in Gunnersville, who was doing great things out there, actually drew interest from Auburn. Coach Gus Malzahn liked what he saw from him, but apparently he wanted to stay closer to home, and Alabama a and was the perfect spot for him. And through the years, number 23 at first, and then eventually became number one, has been number one, uh, you know, number one not only <laughs> in the scorebook, but also number one in the hearts and, and minds of so many Alabama a and Bulldog fans. That's definitely going to be a guy that a lot of people are going to miss around here. Well, think about it. If he went to Auburn, he would have been lost in the likes of Cam Martin, Cameron Petway, and so on and so forth. Carry on Johnson. Carry on Johnson. So for him to come to A&M was really a great career choice for him as well for his football career. And when you talk about, you know, close to college, civil engineering, Huntsville, the perfect city for that to be. More and more jobs are coming. Toyota's here now as well. NASA's it's expanding their stuff. Exactly. NASA's expanding. Lockheed Martin is here. It's just so many options. So you really can't go wrong if you're Jordan Bill. Correct, correct. All right. And, of course, you know, Jordan Bill is just one of the many seniors who were playing for their last time here inside of Lewis Cruz Stadium. And you think about what this senior class has done, the transitions they've gone through, and a lot of great things that have happened. It's just a good way to 
go out on top with a victory. Second straight winning season. And who knows, whatever the future holds, you know Coach Maynard will always look back to the senior classes he had last year and this year for, you know, what, they, what they've done. But here's a good thing about it. Even though you lost a good handful of seniors, man, you got a lot of talent coming back next year. Especially at receiver, and you have a kill glass who's a senior who's going to be extremely polished. He's going to probably fling the football everywhere. And he might. He just might break his own record for passing yards in a season. So we'll see where that goes for a kill glass with the kind of quarterback he can possibly be to now be the anchor for this offense. Correct. Correct with that one. Um, so we are getting ready to wrap things up here in Huntsville, Alabama. Once again, your final score, Alabama A&M 30, Mississippi Valley State University, the Delta Devils 13. Valley State falls to 2 and 10 on the season. A&M finishes with a second straight winning season of 7 and 5. Coach Manor going out, another winning season. He's going to hit the recruiting trail. He's going to tell everybody about what he's been doing. And then all of a sudden, next thing you know, we're probably going to see some guys sign early and then recruiting, I mean, National Signing Day in February. And somewhere right after National Signing Day, they'll be right back out here for spring football. That's right. Back here in Norman, Alabama. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, everyone, we want to thank you for joining us here for SWAC football on the Alabama A&M Bulldog Sports Network. I'm Mo Carter. He's Reggie Reese. We want you guys to have a great weekend, a fantastic Thanksgiving, and the rest of the holidays. And, hey, we'll see you back at another time. Reggie's going to be on basketball patrol when SWAC um, basketball kicks in. And who knows, we might be right back here next year covering Alabama A&M football inside of Lewis Cruz Stadium. Have a great weekend. Enjoy Thanksgiving. Don't eat too much turkey, but eat enough, everybody. And remember, get your nap afterwards before you watch that uh, before you watch that Sunday, uh, Thursday night football next week, too, everyone. So have a good one, and we'll see you next time.